Hi, everybody. It's Gene Simmons, and you're not, and you're listening to the Potter Than Hell podcast with Steve, BC, BB, and Dylan. But you knew that, didn't you? Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Potter Than Hell podcast. This is your last stop on the crazy train of hard rock and heavy metal. So sit back, buckle in, and hang on. Here we go. Hey, Potter Than Hellions, welcome back to the Potter Than Hell podcast. This is Steve, your host. I'm joined as always by... BC. And... BB. And our keyboard player tonight is... Dylan. And uh, back by popular demand, we have our excellent uh, guest co-host tonight, uh, Mr. Dave Borowski. Thank you so much. Uh, pleasure to be here. Hey, game. Mm-hmm. Welcome back. Before we get started, uh, I'm gonna, just going to say we're uh, we're going to do a, an episode this evening about Ronnie James Dio's guitar players in the in the Dio band. And uh, back a couple, I don't know, a couple weeks ago or something, there was a little mini debate going on on Facebook uh, with some different metal sites and a couple you know rockers on there. That um, is Dio a solo artist or is it a band? What do you guys think? What do you think? I'm gonna, I'm gonna go. I'm I'm gonna say solo. I'm gonna say solo just for the fact of it seems like every album there's one guy out, one guy in. He kind of like rotates guys every once in a while. Black Sabbath, he's a band. You know, they're a tight knit group. You know what you're getting. You know, every once in a while, you know, at, when you when you got into the later DL stuff, you actually had a look. You didn't know who who he was playing with. So yeah, I'm definitely gonna go solo. Oh, what do you think, Dave? I, I'm gonna have to say band. I'm gonna have to say it's a. It's a piece. He's got a cohesion. He's got a particular set of group of guys that he works with, that he brings in for the sound that he wants. Uh, he's eternally booting guys out, bringing them back, working with guys that even like you know your, your Jeff Pilsons and your your Jimmy Baines that he, he pulls in from. The, he knows the formula that he wants. He knows the formula that works. It certainly surrounds him. But I, I'm going to say band. BC. <sighs> Kind of torn with this one. I, Caught you off guard, didn't I? They both have. I both agree, both of them. But like you said, I mean, they bring people in. Just, I mean, a band should be a band. That's how I always look at it. And like every album, there's. Granted, they still come back. Some of the same players come back later on, but it's always like a shuffle. So I'm gonna say solo. Dylan, I think he's a solo artist too, because with a band, like a person on the street, for the most part, like if they're familiar with the music, would be able to say like at least like two definitive members. Whereas Dio, it's you know the constant changing of the guard, and Dio is the one constant. So I think it's backing him, and he is the artist. Okay, I'm gonna say band. Is um, it, were you were you waiting until I said something? No, 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 no. no, no, no. no I, I I was gonna say band all along. I was actually gonna start and say band. I agree because it's it's not Ronnie James Dio. You know what I mean? It's Dio. It's not. You know, Ronnie James Dio and the whatever. You know, it's not like Slash featuring Miles Kennedy and the Conspirators. It's not Ronnie James Dio featuring Vinnie Apice and the whatever. I I, I, I go band because there's there's that even the the stuff when they get into different guys and which we're going to talk about later. I think there's still that sound that oh, that y- instantly recognizable thing. See, but I, I think it's like with Alice Cooper. Like, Alice is like a solo artist that has the backing band. Consider it's like Alice. And like the Alice Cooper band is a completely different thing. That was like early on, but then it became Alice Cooper the solo but artist. But it's not Cooper. Yeah, but it's, but like. But I see like Ingbe Malmstein as just yeah. Malmstein. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's just Malmstein. Yeah. There's nobody. He's. He yeah. just gets anybody to play with him put up with him for so long. Exactly. <laughs> we're going to talk about Ingbe in a couple minutes. <laughs> All right, what do you guys think out there? Uh, Dio, band, or solo artist? Let us know. The debate continues. Before we get rolling here, once again, we did an episode, uh, myself, BC, and Dylan. Uh, BB was on assignment. Uh, we did an episode with the guys from the Digital Killed uh, Radio Star podcast last week. Dylan is going to post the link on our episode. I've shared it on, on Facebook, and it's been out. It'll be out like two weeks, I think, by the time you guys are listening to this. It was a great time. We all picked our you know, in quotations, scariest songs. And there were some interesting picks there. It wasn't, you know, uh, 
the Monster Mash and, you know, bullshit like that. There was some very interesting picks and, and a lot of disturbing themes we talked about. You, you guys are fucked up. A lot of murder. Yeah, lot of yeah there was really, a, you know, I thought I used to like you guys. You guys are really fucked up. <laughs> That's why he didn't want to be any part of it. That's you right. see, he kept hitting the murder, the murder button quite a bit with his picks. <laughs> oh, this one's about murder. This one's about somebody that was murdered and... Yeah, fun time. DX. But it, you know, and, and I with the thing when we were going to record that was I was I, I texted David and I said it's going to be interesting to see what everyone's definition of scary is because it could be something Dylan you could have did something about clowns or something you know what I mean? <laughs> <He's> so <afraid laughs> Shoot all clowns. the clowns, <laughs> yeah. clowns. you know something like that. But it was it was definitely an interesting episode. Dylan will post a link on there. I'm also you guys. not afraid of clouds, everybody. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> that was just an example. Just so right. so check that out. It was a, it was a good time. It's always great we have those guys on there and uh, give their podcast a, a listen after you check us out. Those guys have a lot of interesting things. They they're all over the place. They they talk about uh, all kinds of different genres of music, not just uh, like we kind of like to keep it in a rock and metal kind of deal. But those guys kind of expand on a, a ton of different uh, genres of music. All right, that's out of the way, you guys. Uh, what are we listening to real quick here, Dylan? I was going through the like the new music, trying to pin down my list for the end of the year, you know, best albums of the year. And I came across this really awesome album uh, by Ice Nine Kills. Um, they're a metalcore band. You know, they have a lot of screamo in it, so maybe not to everybody's liking at the table. The album is called uh, The Silver Scream. And each song deals with, like, a different horror movie. So, like, the first song is about the Nightmare on Elm Street series. And, like, there's a song about the Friday the 13th series and Saw and Texas Chainsaw Massacre. And it, it's really cool that they, they went through this concept to, like, make sure that each song was about a different movie. And actually the album before it had, I think it was books they were going through. Like Carrie was one of them. Yeah, so it's, it's a really cool concept. Uh, it's definitely making my end of the year list. And they even have little bits of the movie inside the song. So like the Jaws theme pops up a little bit in a different way. And like the, the from a Friday the 13th becomes like a screamo part in the song. So it's, it's really different and really cool. Uh, Ice Nine Kills the Silver Scream. Cool. BC, how about you? Ace Freely, Spaceman. New Ace. I'm just surprised at how... You can listen to the same thing. It's not a bad thing. Uh, I'm surprised at how much I like it. I mean, not that I would... I'm I'm surprised how good it is. And I don't mean that in a bad way, but you know what I mean? It's just a very... It exceeded your expectations. Yes, yes. Thank you. All right, BB, what do you think about it since you picked it, too? Yeah, it's not bad. Uh, it's it's definitely a lot better than what he's released past his solo album. It, it's it, it's really catchy. And also, uh, I kind of actually scoped out that Greta Van Fleet for the first time. And everybody seems like they're talking about them. Uh, Big Lou Reynolds from work, he let me borrow his disc. And uh, it's not bad. It's definitely like Led Zeppelin-ish. <laughs> so you know it's nothing. You know it's nothing that you're gonna you know rock out to, but it's it's, it's not bad. But definitely out of those two, the Ace is definitely a, a good listen. Dave, Uh jeez, I've been on a deal kick. Usually that's what happens when, when when the start of the school year goes. If I'm sitting out in the computer or you know just doing anything that I'm writing, that that's and there's always a deal for your every mood. You know from listening to his anthology from from the Elf stuff all the way to. Uh, you know, the, the, the solo stuff, uh, that, uh, some Pink Floyd because it's fire season, so when I'm ever sitting out around the fire outside, it's uh, Pink Floyd season and a uh, bit of a Clash uh, mode I jump back into. It's always nice to go back and get some uh, some angry Clash stuff, yeah. uh, especially their, their older stuff. Uh, give them enough rope and uh, up to combat rock, it's always good stuff. So when Dave gets home from school and the kids aggravate him, he's got to take a little, little <laughs> bit of aggression. I got to go outside. I got to need a timeout. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, I've been on a rush kick since we did the rush episode last week, and um, actually, uh, after we had Mark Anthony K on here, I thought it was a, a, a great time talking about those uh, first four albums. And actually, we got home from recording, and I, I threw uh, I threw all the world's a stage right on there just to, to listen to those uh, those songs live, and I, I've been rocking to them. I've also been listening to the Ace Frehley album. Uh, it's growing on me. Well, I said I liked the Rockin' with the Boys song even before it was on the album, but that and even Bronx Boy, I, I think they sound a lot better in the context of the album. I think they they fit really well. It's it's good. It's good. There's one song I really don't care for. I think it's like the second last song. I don't know the name of it. 
And uh, but it's 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 pretty good. So uh, you guys, what are you guys listening to out there? Let us know. Uh, I got some Rush going. BC and BB are listening to uh, Ace Spaceman. Myself also. BB's got a little Greta Van Fleet going. Um, I haven't listened to that yet. I I listened yeah. to their EP and I was not overwhelmed, but I'll, I'll give it a shot. Yeah. Uh, Dave's been rocking the Dio. Floyd in the Clash. Dylan's got a little Ice Nine Kills. Silver Scream. Silver Scream. Silver Scream. Um, that's a, that definitely sounds interesting. It is. Before we get rolling here, uh, two quick news things. Uh, there was a story today in. Uh, on the internet about uh, an interview on the uh, talk to me uh, talk to me t o o m e y e y Joshua Toomey has an excellent uh, podcast out there also he had an interview with Jakey e. Lee and he calls Ingve Malmsteen a fucking asshole and um, the the link is on it's on blabbermouth and he just rips him a new one just uh, do you want to read it though um i don't have it up, but oh, I, okay. do you want me to take yours? Yeah, there you go. <laughs> this was quite a... Um, okay. Uh, so, bad language warning coming up, people. Yeah. Um, Cover your kids' ears. Earmuffs. Because this wasn't already marked explicit. Uh, speaking about Malmsteen, Lee said, he's a dick. That's my main <laughs> problem with him. He's an arrogant fucking asshole, and he always has been. I don't know if he is right now, to be honest. I haven't seen him in forever, but I can only assume that if when you're younger, you're that arrogant and that big of a dick that you really never changed. So I assume he still is. But no, he was just, he was a dick. <laughs> and he was a great guitar player, but even then, he was really good at one little thing that he does, doing the sweeps and arpeggios and playing fast, and that's all he could do. That's one of my problems with him. It's a very narrow band of guitar playing. He just focuses on this one part. He's a shitty rhythm player. He can't write a song worth a fuck. And I'm saying this, and this sounds bad. I feel a little bit bad. But knowing what an asshole he is, I don't feel that bad. You can't be that arrogant if you're only really good at one minute aspect of the art of playing guitar. And that's all he was, and yeah, fuck him. <laughs> wow. <laughs> that's like worse than any of BC's rants. Wow. Jesus. I'm, he tears them up. Yeah. I mean, he, got a, he got on a triple soapbox on that one. I'm yeah, it's. Uh, I mean, we we ripped on on Ingve here. Um, like we said, we saw him was one of the most taxing <laughs> taxing concerts that we've ever been to. Dave, I think we talked about Ingve a little bit last time we you were did. here, didn't we? We did because I, I, I he had comes just up seen frequently him a couple months before. Yeah. What do you think? I. <laughs> I mean, what he says is kind of you know, something that you would say in a in a quiet room. So he, he, certainly, he certainly doesn't have a problem, yeah, uh, letting letting him know that about his style, you know. So, uh, you know, and it gets impressed too. Yes. Sure. Boom. Because hey, we're to, we're talking about it because now. hey, he's releasing an album. He's got a new album weeks. coming out uh, November 9th, I think it comes out. It's yes. called Patina. It's a Red Dragon Cartel new album, so uh, we thought we would just they released throw that a couple out there. songs, and both of them are, are really good. They're, they're good, yeah. The, one, the first song that came out, Havana, is just I think it tears it up. The guitar I playing, love that Camilla Cabello song. Out. Huh? Shut up, Don. <laughs> <laughs> one little quick thing: uh, Wendy Dio had just uh, released a statement. They were talking about uh, Ronnie James Dio passing, and she said that she was kind of felt that he went out on a high note. He was back with the guys in Sabbath doing Heaven and Hell, and. Um, that he didn't really get to that point where you would see him uh, vocally deteriorate and, you know, like kind of stay too long at the party and, and that kind of thing, which, uh, which I, I think she, I think is pretty accurate. I think he was still singing good. I mean, it's a, you know, shame that he, you know, he passed away and, you know, he went out artistically on a high note. Right. I think. Yeah, especially then once he got back with the Black Sabbath guys, you know, the, the Heaven and Hell band's amazing. And, you know, who knows what they could have done down the road. All right, let's talk some Dio guitar players. Before we get there, we'll just do a little quick background. Uh, he was in a ton of bands growing up, and then the first one that he actually was pretty much known for in the rock world was Elf. Um, they did three albums with Elf. Um, Elf, self-titled one, and then... Yeah, it was uh, like Ball, room. Carolina County Ball. Carolina That's County it. Ball. Yep. Um, very, very <laughs> bluesy stuff. Very kind of boogie woogie kind of stuff. Um, I know Dave listened to it. I, I, I think you, maybe you guys probably didn't, but uh, uh, I know Dave's you know semi familiar with it. Um, pretty rock and roll. It certainly you wouldn't. That wouldn't be, if you heard the music without the, his voice, which isn't even that growly. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? You wouldn't think that it was anything that he would be associated with. Um, but you know. Here's a guy that was Vermont, I think, born and bred, moved out to New York, but he, he was a trombone guy. Yeah. Matter of fact, and he even played the bass, I think, on uh, one of the Elf albums. Mm -hmm. He was the bassist. Yeah, so, yeah, so and, and uh, they got 
picked up on a tour with Rainbow. Correct. No, I'm sorry, Deep Purple. Yes, when Blackmore was. And that's how he hooked up with Richie Blackmore, and then when Richie went off the rails with, with Rainbow, and um, so then he picked up Ronnie, and uh, and I think pretty much the Elf Band, guys from the Elf Band, and then uh, then they started Rainbow. And the first uh, Rainbow album, Richie Blackmore's Rainbow, you know, it has some good stuff on it. it is, you could tell they were just kind of feeling their way around. Uh, you know, you got Man of the Silver Mountain out of it. Then they put out what I think is is their their, their best album, Rising. Right. It's absolutely amazing. We're not going to get into any details. And then uh, Long Live Rock and Roll, they did a bunch of live stuff. And then um, they blew apart because we talked about uh, Richie Blackmore and how he was on the Deep Purple episode. And... Um, and when, when we get into Dio here, we'll, we'll talk about some of the difficulties that he had. So then he goes into Sabbath. So Ozzy leaves Sabbath, or they boot him out, depending on who you ask. And Ronnie comes in, and they do Heaven and Hell, and they do Mob Rules with them, and then Live Evil. And then Live Evil apparently was the last straw. So then Dio strikes out on his own. Brings back Jimmy Bain from, uh, from the Rainbow Days. And hooks up with, uh, brings Vinnie Apice with them from Black Sabbath. And uh, unknown guitar player at the time from a band called Sweet Savage, and uh, I think they were an Irish Irish band. And um, Vivian Campbell, just amazing, amazing album. We talked about uh, Holy Diver on the debut albums. Uh, BB, uh, give us your uh, Holy Diver, uh, Vivian Campbell feel for this here, and we'll just go right around. All right, um, I think th- this is a great album, uh, especially coming out of the gates. You, you have to believe, you know, Dio's going to put up some high quality stuff. Just leaving. Black Sabbath and this group that he has is is unbelievable and and it shows in the in the whole album Holy Diver it's just a fantastic album released in 1983 and the songs on it are from front to back it's just in in my eyes there's not really a skippable song on this it, and it's just a really great way to say you know fuck you Black Sabbath here was fuck you Rainbow here you go I'm gonna put some shit out and and hit you with the left and the right, and this is gonna, you know, rock the rock the '80s world with uh, some heavy shit. Oh, I agree. It's actually, you know, it, 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 I think it's the pinnacle of what he's doing here at, at that time. I mean, you got Vivian Campbell. I think he's 20 years old, I believe, when he starts. He's really young. But uh, again, Rainbow in the Dark. It's my favorite solo of all time. I think it's it's just uh, such an appropriate piece. Angry. Even you know, Shame on the Night. It's so heavy and it, uh, it's growly. Gypsy, if you put that on in the car when you're driving, all of a sudden you're driving 15, 20 miles an hour faster and you don't know why. Because that was just, it just screams, especially when it's it's loud and it's, it's going. It's just a tremendous album. All the way through, I agree with, with BB from, from, from start to finish. There's yeah. not a bad song on it. It just kills. I, I agree with you. Everybody so far. I mean, when this, I first got this, I mean, I was blown away. I think I wore out the cassette tape <laughs> back in those days. Uh, so my, I mean, there's not a bad song like BB said, but uh, my favorite is like Straight Through the Heart. Like, yeah. Many times I threw my couch through my house window because <laughs> that just gets me pumped up. BC Rex's house like rock stars Rick hotel rooms. <laughs> Yeah, uh, and we, we talked about this, the, like these first three albums on another episode, but just we're kind of reiterating here. Um, I think it's just outstanding. Just coming out of the gate with Stand Up and Shout is just like, that in itself is just a statement. Bang, in your face, hard rocker. And, and the guitar playing and the solos are, are just amazing on this on the whole album. But just listen to the ripping solos on Stand Up and Shout. Just absolutely amazing. Vivian Campbell is Those just like killer, right? like off the chart on this on this album. The whole album. The only, my only one is like I I wish Shame on the Night was in a different position on the album. I don't think it was a good Finish it. ending track. You know, I don't know what else you could throw in there. I, I think I talked about it on the other episode, but like BC said, I, I I absolutely love Straight Through the Heart. I love how it just kicks in, and it's kind of like a, just a, a punch in the gut, how that kicks in. And and every time now that I hear Rainbow in the Dark, I hear the solo, I think of Dave Brosky <laughs> sitting here. Because we, we talked about that solo, like, many, many times, like, just, you know, just conversationally, we see each other somewhere and, and we would somehow always have a, a D.O. conversation and uh, and it would always uh, circle back to the guitar solo and Rainbow in the Dark. Yeah. But um, just the, such a fantastic debut album and, and B.B., you're absolutely right. That, you know, right out of the gate, screw you guys, this is my band <laughs> and 
we're just gonna we're just gonna tear it up. And if you read any of the articles and stuff when they first came out, they that's it's a band. And um, and these guys were just out to to kick ass. And and I think they did. It's one of the best debut albums out there. It, it's always talked about in one of the best metal albums on you know. There's 8,000 lists out there for everything, but whenever there's talk about a, a metal album, Holy Divers always talked about, when there's always metal album debut albums, Holy Divers is even further up on the list, I think, of, of debut albums. And uh, the, the guitar playing, Vivian Campbell, just his, his sound. And this was before all the hair metal and shit got started. This was just a great rock, hard metal band. I agree. Go back and listen for me. When the songs are fading, that's when Vivian Campbell's doing his great work. These chirps and these incredibly uh, intricate pieces as the song's fading and it's almost disappearing. He's doing this fantastic stuff on the guitar that just really, you got to pay attention absolutely, to it. Absolutely, absolutely. And, 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 and I can only imagine just being in the studio, just watching them create this album, just seeing how they yeah. all just you know get together, or even just the first time that they played as a band together just to practice okay here's what I got here's what I got and they just kind of Dave you're you're in a band you, you have have you had those moments where you bring someone in and you guys play and you're like yeah this is uh, often this is it often and sometimes they, you know the different drummers that you have you you give them a look and if he's smiling <laughs> or something like right. that where you know it's it's gelling so that's that's when you when you have that groove and then it even gets better when or sometimes you 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 don't see each other for a while. You take a hiatus for a couple of weeks, and then you come back, and it's like, oh, it's like putting on a, an old shoe that feels good. Putting that, 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 that comfy sweatshirt love, back on. It's like, oh my god. So that's you know. Because I mean, I've I've watched Dave's band many times, and I and and I watch bands, and um, and I've noticed those guys. You could kind of see them looking at each other. Yeah, we're we're having a good right, we're having yeah. a good time up here. You could tell when someone gels, and you and you could tell when someone's just going through the motions too. It may sound good, but you had that. There's that little staleness to it. It's not that that loose tightness that's there. Right. And I think these guys, uh, these guys have that. I don't. Is loose tightness even a thing? I like that term. I'm gonna I'm gonna coin that now. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's gonna, yeah. that's, gonna, that's gonna be your next song. <laughs> um, but you can tell these guys. They just they just gelled so good and um, and. Even the live stuff, the live videos. Live, live is, is fantastic. Oh, and, and I got to see them. Once we talk about uh, Last in Line, we'll, I, I'll get, because that's the first time I saw them live. But, like, just amazing. And, and this album established the Dio sound. Yes. Because it's, it's, it's not Rainbow. It's not Black Sabbath. It's not Elf. Or for damn sure it's not Elf. <laughs> but... This is the this is the blueprint for all the rest of the albums to, to come after it, I think. And I think it's just a, 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 like a total ass-kicking uh, start to the start That's, to that's the, the devil horns. That, that's the yeah. yeah. deal. Yeah, that's Definitely. And, and if you look at the top of Murray's head, right. they're like the horns. They're the horns. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so they they do that. They tore the shit out of that. They get back in the studio. They they throw them right back in there, and uh, they come out last in line. That uh, comes out in July of 1984, uh, and, and this is the album that my first Dio album that I picked up when it actually came out. Uh, we'll 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 do our little round table, round square table here. Uh, BB, last in line. Yeah, this was the actually the this is the first album I I found Dio. Uh, my buddy Chris Wagner, his brother Scott. Oh, you have to listen to this this guy. He used to he used to sing in Black Sabbath, and I'm like, Ozzy? <laughs> oh no no no! And he didn't know, but but man oh man, from when you when you put that on, we rock. Like it, it just it just gets you because uh, this being my first album of of learning of Ronnie James Dio, the first time you hear that, it just it, it grabs you, and you're like, wow! Like it, you're not listening, you're not hearing any of this kind of music at this point in time, and in 1985 An another one it, i really think it's a a great sophomore album once again there there there's some really high quality songs on here and pretty much every one vivian rips the shit out of it I agree. to me it's almost an, ex an, an extension of, of holy diver it keeps going on it's, it's the same formula they don't come in for the sophomore effort and, and change things up like some bands do where they get artsy or they get cutesy or they the keyboard here keyboard there they don't you know it's a, it's a beautiful thing. As a matter of fact, uh, senior year in, in high school, we actually came out to last in line. <laughs> and our basketball, what are you guys, a bunch of morons? If 
didn't matter. It was that important to us. Because Tough they, shit. They, they, they picked us to be pretty stinky, and we were. Uh, <laughs> but you had good music when you were doing it. That's what we came out with, you know, waiting for that guitar solo. <laughs> what, are these people, these gyms, like, what are these kids doing? But it was an important album for us at the time. Deal. But hey, in a couple of years they were coming out to the fat boys, so <laughs> from deal to the fat boys. Oh god. god. What happened there? What yeah. happened? <laughs> this country. <laughs> yeah, I agree. I mean this picked up pretty much where the last album left off. To be back okay, I'm gonna back up a little bit here. These first two albums are more band than later deal. How's that? To me, at least. Sure. But, uh, Great way to play both sides of the fence. No, no, I mean, it started off, but then later on, it just seemed like it got a little more bouncing around. And the first two albums are... First three, actually. But the first two, to me, are... We got the first... <laughs> deal. <laughs> what deal. do we got? Vivian. <laughs> 26 minutes. First... <laughs> yeah, I... This is the first... Like I said before, this is the first album that I got um, when it actually came out. And, and I think the... One of the great things about a song is, and you know, they open the album with We Rock, but then they close the shows with We Rock when they when they play live. I think that's the staple of a great song. It's a great, like, you, it opens the album like, man, this is great. But then it's even a great closer. You're like, wow, like, we, it, like, it fits so good at both ends of the spectrum. I, I, I can't decide if I like this album a little better than, than Holy Diver. It's it's hard for me to decide. I, I it's kind of, it's maybe kind of a mood thing. Like the only like weak part on Holy Diver for me is Shame on the Night, and the only weak part on Last in Line for me is Mystery. Um, and and Ronnie James Dio hated the song Mystery. He hated that song. He never wanted to play it live. The only reason they played it live was because the band liked the song and they wanted to play it. I'm with Ronnie on this one. Not a huge fan of that song. <laughs> it's okay. It's the most poppy song on the on the album. I think mm-hmm. the most maybe radio friendly, if you want to if you want to call it that. But like some of the other songs on there uh, that you don't that you don't see, you don't you didn't see them play live because they were at that time when they were playing. You know, you're you're playing shit from Holy Dive. You're playing stuff from Last in Line. And you're playing Rainbow stuff. You're playing Black Sabbath stuff. So they're you know. Even at their second album, there's only so many songs they could fit into a concert. And at this point, they were kind of uh, doing medleys of, of different parts of like Sabbath songs and, and Rainbow songs to hopefully get some more of these songs in. But like songs like I Speed at Night, One Night in the City, um, like Evil Eyes, Eat Your Heart Out, just and, and even Egypt, The Chains Are On, is such a, 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 a great song. Um, Doro Pesh does a great version of that song. Oh, yeah. And... Um, and there's there's no, and and I totally agree with Dave. There's no let up on this album. There's no changing up that up. Let's you know let's try something different. There's a, a maybe a little bit more keyboards here and there on the album, but nothing crazy. There's no, they're not really prominent. They're not really out front. But it's just a great straight ahead. I think this album is a little little more hard rock than metal though. I think if uh, you know songs like "I Speed at Night," "One Night in the City," "One Night in the City," I think is great, and the guitar playing on on this album is, it's just it's getting better. Like I said, I think it's a, a mood thing for me, which album I like better. And, and like after listening to all the stuff this week, uh, "Last in Line" is just a little bit out front of uh, "Holy Diver" um, this this week. Next week, <laughs> next week could be it'll be different. Totally. But I guarantee you, there either one of those albums will never be knocked out of one and two. As far as the Dio catalog goes, the Dio band catalog, um, there's one other album that I think is out of all of his works that is like the best overall of everything. They they had a formula, they stuck with it, and and it and it really shows through on this on this album. It's just it's just kick ass. And um, this was the album that I saw them live. Uh, myself, Rob, that's been on the show many times. One of my classmates, uh, Mike Galati, huh? and uh, this other uh, guy drove us, Chuck Karnowski, I think his name was. I, I'm, I'm not quite sure if that's the pronunciation of it. Um, he drove. We went down, Twisted Sister opened up for them at the Spectrum. So if you've seen that uh, special at the Spectrum video DVD, uh, we were at that show. It was absolutely phenomenal. They came out, the whole stage was a pyramid, the top of the pyramid lips off, and there's Vinny's drum kit underneath there, and then the stairs opened up, and Dio came out. It was just absolutely amazing it was the uh, early in my concert going days but like the the lasers they had then and the 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 smoke there wasn't a whole lot of pyro there was some uh when they did we rock he did the whip and he cracked the whip and the the 
the like sparkly explosions went off up above it. It was just a, a phenomenal concert. And um, if if you guys have not seen that, it's on YouTube. Just look up uh, Dio Special Inspection. Now there's two of them. There's one from '86, and then there's one from '84. The one from '84 was the first one, the one that we were at, and. Uh, the second one, I think, is uh, Craig Goldie on that one, but this is the one with Vivian Campbell. And just, uh, I was so glad, uh, you know, looking back and, you know, concerts that I've gone to, this concert is always in my top three concerts ever. And it was it was fantastic. And uh, like I said, Twisted Sister opened the show, and, and they were great. That's when uh, Stay Hungry first came out, so they, uh, they were still playing a lot of the older stuff from Under the Blade, from You Can't Stop Rock and Roll, and um, just a phenomenal show so um, I'm, I'm, I feel very privileged that I was able in, to, to see that incarnation of the band and actually I got to see them on the next tour also um, but overall just a fantastic album Dylan real quick what's your thoughts I know you guys don't hear Dylan a lot tonight he chose to uh, just kind of uh, produce this one so but uh, what, what do you think I, I think the first two Dio albums are untouchable basically um, they, sh they were almost a proof of concept of what Dio could be on his own without you know, Black Sabbath or with, without Rainbow. And I, I think he, he really showed people that were maybe thinking, uh, maybe he's good just like with these other like people to prop him up, but I think he really showed that he is his own entity and he can, he, he does rock like the, like the song. So th those are definitely the, the two Dio albums that I'll go back to the most, I would say. Um, out of the out of his catalog. All right, cool. And then um, you know, a year later, bang! They and, and this is this is the the period of rock and metal that I like the best, where these bands were every year coming out with an album. Like you know, this one was great. Bang! Here's another one. You know, here's a tour. Bang! Here's another one. I just I just love that that um, you know you can see how these you know in retrospect you can see how these guys got burned out because they were just you know record record. Tour, record, tour, you know, very well, little. Write all that good stuff in a three year span. All right. those out. I mean, he always writes the lyrics and does a lot of the music as right. well. Uh, that's just impressive. Yeah. And, and, like, I look at it this way, too. Like, you hear a lot of, uh, you know, it's said a lot that uh, the band's debut album, they, they had their whole beginning of their life to write it, and then, like, six months to write, or a couple weeks to write the second one. This isn't right. that way with this band. No. They they only had a couple months to, to you know get together to write to produce it to, to and to get it out there. So this has been as kind of an anomaly in in that in that sense where they were pretty much just bang, got together, wrote shit, put it down and went out. Where other bands that you know came up through the clubs and everything like that, these guys just started right out. You know, I mean, you have a, a guy that's been in Rainbow and Black Sabbath. You're obviously going to have a little more. Uh, star power, if you will, to uh, you know he get stuff out. Writing there. machine because yeah. there's only two years before Mob yeah. Rules and, and the Holy Diver comes out, right? And he's writing on those as yep. well. You know, he's he's writing on the Black Sabbath stuff. And even just like to to now, you wonder what else is out there. You know, like lyric books and <laughs> you know demos and and all that stuff. Right. Um, just it, it's amazing. So they uh, August fifteenth. I think a very underrated album comes out, Sacred Heart, uh, came out in August of 1985. I'll give you my thoughts on this in a minute. BB, what do you think? This has to grow on me. I don't know why. I don't know if my expectations when when I went from last in line and then and then and then backwards and then this came out. I don't know if my ex expectations were a little too high. It never really grabbed me like I, like like last in line and Holy Diver did, but. Still, Vivian's playing on this. Like, I, I wrote down another lie in just another day. Those two solos and those songs are just freaking fantastic, and and it just really showcases what a great actual guitarist he was back in the day. I agree. Um, I can remember for me getting this. Um, I, I still have it on cassette. As a matter of fact, <laughs> <laughs> I do, but. Uh, it, it jumps out with King of Rock and Roll. That's I mean that just punches you right in the face. And and the change for me maybe where how it has to grow on you was then Sacred Heart came next and it was like keyboards. What the hell is this? Mm -hmm. It was it was 
here's here's the change now. Right. And then even stuff like uh, Hungry for Heaven. I heard it. I remember hearing it on Rock 107 saying, "What the hell is this crap?" I I couldn't imagine. Like, are we going are we going pop? Are we going mainstream here? Is he is he changing the formula? Rock and roll children, same thing. He got a little bit. It, it's not not that he lost the edge because you still have you know a, a, another a lie and uh, Peter Bar. Yeah. That just kind of, but but it was certainly a little bit of a change from the formula that that we were used to hearing. Right. Uh, but still a killer album. Man. King of Rock and Roll is just that's just like Gypsy for me, man. It just it just takes you. <laughs> I agree with these guys. Uh, when it first came out, you know, King of Rock and Roll. Of course, how can you go wrong with that? But uh, it was a few songs on here were a little bit more not heavy guitar oriented. I thought, which kind of made me a little bit nervous. But overall, like Steve said, uh, I think it's a good underrated album too. Like. Uh, like a beat of heart, I guess. To me, I like the heaviness of, age, of Vivian. Yeah. Vivian's playing on all first three albums. I like the heaviness, and then like the solo one too. And then after Deal, he was uh, lost for many years. Yeah, I love State the Sacred Heart album. I, I think it's I think it's great. Um, King of Rock and Roll. When it first came on, I was like, wow, this is like a live song at the beginning of a studio album. Like, because at that point. You had the first two albums. You're kind of your expectations are high. Your expectations sure. are like, yeah. all right, here we go. New new deal. Should King of Rock and Roll comes on, awesome. Um, Sacred Heart comes on. Yeah. I actually fucking love this song. Is it sad? To me, it was like holy smokes. I I do. I, I I don't I don't know why. I, I well I know exactly why I like this. I like the song. Um, it, it's actually one of my favorite Dio songs. When I went to, I saw them twice on this tour. I saw them once with Vivian Campbell and the second time with Craig Goldie. And this is the song when they played that all the stage stuff started happening. They had these two nights on these pedestals and they'd come out and they'd kind of sword fight. And then the dragon came up on the side and like they had like major like lasers. I, I, I just love it. And when they do the the part where it stops and the, the they do it live like and you hear it a little bit on the studio version where the dragon roars when they did that live it was so fucking loud and it scared the shit out of you and it was so cool and i always just remember that and and it was cool too because i i really enjoy the album another another lie is good rock and roll children i think is one of dio's best songs if you listen to that song the guitar playing in that song is absolutely phenomenal. Hungry for Heaven, I could, I could, if I never heard that song again, I, 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 I could live the rest of my life and, and be happy. Um, I grew up BC. Like the beat of a heart is just a phenomenal song. When that, uh, you get that da 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 da, and then you hear the do do, do do, like the heartbeat. That's just cool studio thinking. Cool, just like to to put a little bit of, of the song in there. And, um, and the solo was just phenomenal. But just Another Day is, is, is good, a good rocker. Fallen Angels is pretty good. Shoot Shoot is a, is a good song, too. Um, not as strong of an album overall, but for me, uh, the, the saving grace, the, the two songs are Sacred Heart and Rock and Roll Children. Uh, the guitar playing is just absolutely phenomenal. You know, throughout the whole thing, and it's if, if you listen to these first three albums, you could maybe kind of, between Last in Line and... Um, Sacred Heart, see a little decline in um, Vivian Campbell and Ronnie James Dio's thing because the guitars don't seem as much out front um, as, yeah, as the first two. I agree. Mm-hmm. You can see maybe there's a little rift there, and um, but like when I saw this this tour live too, I was just like crazy. And I remember seeing that show. We played, saw them down in Bethlehem, and Vivian was doing a solo, and someone whipped a fucking tennis ball and hit him. And he stopped right in the middle of a solo, freaked out, pissed off. You know, if you see that guy, you don't like one of them things, grab that motherfucker and kick his ass. And and I always remember that. He like stopped right in the middle of the thing. It was just like a fucking tennis ball went flying up and bang, fucking. I think he hit the guitar. And uh, he just freaking freaked out. Is, but, it, is it because they didn't play Rawhide a million times in a row? Oh. So they just started throwing stuff at him? No, no. no. <laughs> Blues Brothers. I know, I know. Um, but just that, I think the the first three that, that this these albums set the stage for the rest of the the DL catalog. Not as this one is not as strong as the other as the other ones. Um, but overall, the production of these throughout Ronnie James Dio produced all these albums. The production is great on them. Yeah. The sound is great, and and like Dave said, here comes your little subtle change 
a little more keyboardy on this album. And uh, as we talked about before, uh, right in the middle of the tour, I'm not really sure the dynamics of what happened, um, how Vivian ended up leaving the band. I, they did not go out on good terms. They hated one another for forever. I remember reading that in Circus Magazine, and I was heartbroken. I, thought, I know. What am I going to do now? I don't want to live. You know, that was, and really, for me, that, that changed my the perspective of deal because it wasn't the, the deal that I knew. It was almost like you know when right. David Lee Roth leaves Van Halen. It's it's you got to get used to a, a whole new formula. It, it, it's not the old. It, it may be new, maybe better. But I'm not getting used to it. But it's I'm not still not used to it. But I, 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 I would agree with that. Uh, <laughs> um, but I think the the one of the the main riffs uh, is when they did the Stars song. If you watch that, uh, there's a there's a great video. They have the whole thing from when they come to the studio, how they um, re- record the vocals, and then they have the the dual drummers. It's Vinny Appice and uh, Frankie Benelli playing drums. It's um, Vivian Campbell and Jimmy Bain doing the uh, the rhythm guitar, and then Adrian Smith and Dave Murray do the the, the melodic guitar riff that that they play over the the uh, the chorus at the end. But watch the guitar part of that video. At that time, I guess it was Jimmy Bain and Vivian Campbell that came up with the idea to do this because it was when We Are the World. Thing was out. Okay, right. So they wanted to do a metal version of it. So they came to Ronnie with it, and he pretty much just took it over. Um, they had the core of the song. Ronnie took the song over pretty much, took the project over. But if you watch that video, um, like Craig Goldie comes out of fucking nowhere. He comes out of nowhere. I mean, he's the guitar player in Jafria. At that point, Jafria is not or never were a force in the... You know, hard rock or metal or a great band. Don't get me wrong, great, great band. band yes. And um, if you want to hear a, a great um, interview with Craig Goldie, listen to the Grown Up Rock podcast. Uh, Stephen Michael did an interview with Craig Goldie, and it goes through all of this what happened, how he became in Dio, and it's a it's a it's great. I've listened to the interview like three times. It's great. You guys go check it out seriously. But he goes into like the dynamics of what happened. Ronnie had said to Craig, if something ever happens and Vivian leaves the band, he said, you're going to be my guy. So, and it was right after that that, you know, Vivian was gone and Craig Goldie just, you know, stepped right in there. You know, you're going to play in Jeffrey, you're going to play in Deal. Come on, I'm going to play in fucking Deal. Mm-hmm. You know? Okay. And, and Craig Goldie, since then, has been his go to guy. And he was the go to guy when they um, did Dream Evil. And actually, Vivian was out of the band, they came out with Intermission which had some, some live songs. And it's weird, too, because on the live tracks, it has uh, it's uh, King of Rock and Roll, Rainbow of the Dark, Sacred Heart. And the Sacred Heart's like a longer version. It's really good. Yeah. Um, and then there's a studio track, Time to Burn, which Craig Goldie plays on. And then it goes back into a medley with Rock and Roll Children, Long Live Rock and Roll, Man on the Silver Mountain, and then We Rock. So, and that was, uh, and I remember hearing that that was coming. I'm thinking, oh, cool, a D.O. live album is coming out. And then it was like an EP. It was like... <laughs> I think and why is there a fucking studio six, song here? Six tunes on there? Yeah. Six, 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 and yeah. they had the cassette, so I'm like, okay, King of Rock and Roll, I'm like, Time to Burn. I'm like, okay, that's gonna. I never heard of that song, so I'll check it out. And I'm like, it's a studio track. This is like a live thing here. Yeah, um, you got a live album. Bad. It's not bad. It's not. I think it was just a, a, a thrown it together quick song, right. I think. Um, but why is it like live, live, live? Studio, Studio. Live, right. back to live. Right, because I had it on cassette, it, and it was the first song on side two. last. Like, okay, here's the studio track. <laughs> right. the yeah. this. Or do the opposite of what you did with Sacred Heart. Throw the studio track on first, and then play the live songs. Right. You know, it, it just it just felt weird, and it felt rushed. And um, so uh, once they get done with that, they, they go out, they, they do another leg of uh, Sacred Heart tour, because I saw them again in Bethlehem with Craig Goldie playing, which was, it, it was, I mean, it was essentially the same show with just a different guy playing guitar, but it was, it was good. You could, you could tell there was a different dynamic on stage that it was, I don't know if the, if it was relief that Vivian Campbell was gone because of the tensions that were going on. It seemed the more kind of relieved guys playing on stage. It was, it was a great show. I'm surprised you went on that. We went on a bus trip on that. I day. miss Jimmy DiStefano. If you're ever out there, I was at Keystone. I can remember saying, "You want to? We're going to see Dio." You want to? Yes. Then I said, "Oh, I can't." He's okay. 
Like, like, he never even tried. Oh, he didn't even try to He never even pushed you. I mean, what were you thinking? I would have <laughs> fucking hounded you. <laughs> Honestly. And I so said, I'll, I'll catch him again. And there was no ever again. Because uh, I never... No. Around the area, you never came around, yeah. really. No. After that, I didn't... We didn't see him until uh, Angry Machines. Yeah. He, he never came around. And that was that the time, 90s, was, you know? But, uh... Great, great show. Um, they go back in the studio, and July, they release... Uh, Dream Evil. Uh, what do you think about Dream Evil, BB? What do you got for us? Uh, Are you dreaming evil? Uh, sometimes. Sometimes. Like <laughs> kicking BC's ass. But. Well, that's not evil. That's just fun. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, Dream Evil. And you know, now you got Goldie in the band. Uh, first song, Night People. Uh, solo. I, I think it's a great opening solo. It's really fast. It's definitely not Vivian Campbell. You, you know you know, it's a different player. Um, <laughs> it's not bad. It, it's... And once again, you almost try to put the rest of these albums up to the first two. At least that's kind of what in my my mind works. Uh, another great solo from Dream Evil, Sunset Superman. Another, and, 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 and even you can see Goldie's influence because Overlove is kind of it starts like a little it's a little bluesy ish. So now you have a big you have a big. Uh, Triangle of where we're going with this, and and I think uh, the way they, they close this album off with uh, "Faces in the Window" and "When Women Cry," I think those two songs are the best solo, guitar solo wise songs on the album. It's just a just a great way to end the album, and, and definitely that you definitely have to listen to "When the Woman Cries." It's just a, a fantastic, fantastic solo. All right, um, you know. It, it, it was a change for me too. Again, it's, yeah. it's not the same formula. He comes out with Night People. You know, it's a, that same punch in the face deal. Always starts off the album with that punch in the face. Um, and I, I was, I wasn't impressed with it. I, I remember first hearing it, and I kind of dismissed it. But the the song that really hooked me on was uh, Over Love. That, that guitar work on Over Love is just killer. Uh, all of a sudden, you're thinking, Hey, this guy's not Vivian Campbell, but man, he could play. He, he he's he can play. He's he's fantastic, uh, and he ends up really uh, fitting in. And then, really for me, with, with Goldie, after he leaves and then he doesn't come back to Magica, when you hear Magica, it's like, oh, that's uh, that's what we, it has been missing. It's There's the back. missing formula right there. Uh, if it wasn't Vivian Campbell, it has to be Goldie because he just he kicks it. Um, uh, going back to this album, I, I was like a jaded lover. Um. <laughs> Vivian was gone, and I was like, "You mean a jilted lover?" Jilted, I get it. <laughs> I have jaded in my mind. You're a jaded lover now. He was envious of where Vivian Campbell was. And yeah. So uh, this came out, and I, I don't know. I mean, it was Dio. I'm a fan of Dio, and then I just, I was not down with Greg Goldie when this came out for some reason. It took me probably about, I say, a good eight to ten years before I opened wow. and loved it. Before you album. embraced it. For, until I embraced this album, it took me a good ten years. To come back around to it, cause man, you figure this came out in '87, and by then music was starting to fucking there was so much to listen to you, you could have passed me. And I kind of drifted away from uh, probably deal the last these the next two uh, releases, but uh, I came back and uh, it, this album is really growing. I mean, and when like you said, sit down, listen to it, open your mind. And, okay, it's not Vivian, but. Uh, and uh, Greg is uh, growing on me after. It was easy to dismiss. You know, just because back back, back then, I'm talking yeah. when I was 87, I was 17 yeah. years old, and I was like, what the fuck, you know? What the right. fuck is that? I'm not going to listen to it anymore. Listen to it once and it's done. Yeah, God. So, you know. But uh, eh, good 10 years later, I embrace it, and I, I, this is a very good album. Yeah, I uh, I remember picking this up, and uh, you, know, you know, you're looking at the cover, and you're you're like, oh, you know, it's kind of cool, and, and uh, you throw it in. I think I had it on cassette, so... Uh, no, actually, I'm sorry. I think I, I bought this on CD. Now that I, I think about it, so you're transitioning away from vinyl at this point. 86, 87. You were hot shit. 87. I know, shit man. You had a fucking CD. CD. Man, you were like, <laughs> holy shit. You went from and, this um, to this. Yeah. <laughs> so, but I remember, I remember listening to it, and I'm like, uh, it starts out with that keyboard. Dun, dun. As soon as I heard the key, I'm like, this is gonna suck. <laughs> <laughs> that was my, you know, as quick as that riff little. Jingle is on the beginning of that song. I'm like, this is gonna blow, totally suck. But then the guitar kicked in. I'm like, okay, um, you know, not that it's not a rip your head off track like uh, stand up and shout, but it's maybe two steps down from it. But 
Good start. So you want to sit up and yell a little louder. Yeah, you don't want to stand up and shout. You're just going to sit up straight and, and, uh, and <laughs> Talk sp- speak loudly. loudly. <laughs> um, but like this, and then the, the solo in it is is fantastic. I'm like, okay, but at this point, I'm thinking, okay, I've already seen him live. I've already heard and seen the um, the stars. Uh, we're stars thing. So I'm thinking, okay, this is going to be cool. Dream Evil is cool. And I love the the dream and a evil. <laughs> like, very cool. But um, I, I like the overall sound of this album. Like, so, and, and it's got a lot of great songs on this album. Sunset Superman is freaking great. The drums are great on this album. The, the, the drums are great. I know we're talking about guitar players, but this is you still have the, the core of the band at this point. And you, the only guy you got different is Craig Goldie. And I think he fit... Uh, you know, pretty seamlessly into the band. Uh, I, I think it, you can feel a kind of comfortableness of the guys playing with him. I can live without all the fools sailed away. Naked in the Rain is fantastic. And, and Dave, you're absolutely right. Overlove that uh, that that finger picking. Then it starts off clean too, which is really yeah, you know, yeah, yeah you know, undistorted clean things. guitar. It, it, it sounds freaking great. And then it it kicks in. I was listening to that yesterday. I was like, holy shit! I uh, totally forgot how much I I really like this album. And this was. One of the uh, probably first 15, 10 or 15 CDs that I ever bought. So at that point, like I'm not listening to my vinyl. Like I'm listening only listening to the cassettes in the car because you know you didn't have a CD player in your car yet. You just you know you had one at home. And, and, um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was like the size of a uh, like a VCR a is now. Yeah, <laughs> it, was, you know, it was almost a piece of furniture then. Um, I could have been a dreamer. I could live without that. That's a little too keyboard heavy and, and uh, yeah. not guitar oriented for me. But Faces in the Window is great. But I absolutely fucking love When a Woman Cries. That song is just, and when you get that, that, that keyboard that goes in there. But like listen to the solos on this on this song and just the whole album. I, I think it, uh, it showcased Craig Goldie pretty good. And, and, and Dave, I, I think you're absolutely right that um, he was missed after this um and he explains uh what what took place after this well, as a listener you could see that yeah that that key component is it's essential gone. it's it's gone i mean i, I it, what's deal isn't deal after he goes truly for me at least yeah and um and listen to that interview on grown-up rock podcast um Stephen, I'm plugging the shit out of you here, buddy. Come on, man. Um, but it, it, it's an amazing interview. It really is. And he goes into all of this stuff of, of, of what happened. And he always remained friends with, with Ronnie and, and just other projects and stuff got in the way. I don't remember I don't remember them touring for this though. I, I don't I don't remember I don't know yeah. if, if that was a point where just out of high school and like, like BC was absolutely right. There was so much stuff coming out at this okay. point that it was it was tough to keep track of you know who was who was touring, who was doing what, and you know we didn't have the internet back then. You couldn't you know yeah. p- p- pull the shit up on your phone and check it out. You had to wait till Circus or Hit Parade or came out. I remember Boston's crank. third stage had come out around that time. Yeah, it was they were touring yeah. and it was holy smokes. There was so much stuff coming yeah. out. You know? and, and the only and one of the main resources that I had was um, in our school library. They used to get Billboard magazine. And they used to have the big, and when it was a big magazine, they had to have the, they'd have the full, full page, page ads, ads, and they would have all the tour dates for these bands. But now as out of high school, you got to go to all these shows. See, see? I just had to heard word of mouth. There was no social media. I just had to have some guy media. That's you because smoking a cigarette outside the commons area. That's because you know, that's how you learn. That's because you're hanging with all the Simpson people. You're hanging with with the <laughs> That's why I had already moved. <laughs> they were, they were still He's hanging out with Miss Bamba in the library. Learning what's, Come on, Miss Bamba. She where, thought <laughs> she thought he was in the, Billboard the library and stuff. And she probably she probably thought hey, deals coming to town. By the time by the time cool by the time. Dave got there. Any of the pages torn out? <laughs> There's a page missing. Yeah. 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 So uh, you know, Craig Goldie comes and goes for one album, which is, which I think, was a great album. And um, like a 19 year old Rowan Robertson comes in, yep. uh, another young unknown gunslinger. BB, uh, what do you got on uh, Lock Up the Wolves, my friend? This this album is fucking amazing. I love this album. I think Rowan's addition to the band gives it. A little bit of hope in my eyes. I think his playing on, on this album is amazing. And 
and you said 19. I really, I swear, I thought I read the other day he was actually he was signed when he was 17. He may have been 17. But, you're right. Don't but, yeah, don't 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 quote me. You're right. So you're right. so in that little aspect of being fucking 17 and playing with Ronnie James Dio, that this just back, the, back this puts really. it up, this just blows my mind. This Rowan Robertson kid, um, Wild I One. Think, just, just a fantastic song, but the solo in the middle and the solo in the end just fit that song amazingly. I like, I like the the solo in in Lock of the Wolves. I like the solo a little bit better than the song. I don't know what it is. Uh, hey Angels, another great solo song, but just, once again, this kid being seventeen and playing with deals has to be fucking blowing his mind. I couldn't agree with you more. I mean, really, this this kid could play. Wild one, That's that was the one for me, too. Uh, Lock Up the Wolves is, is, is great, too. Uh, hey, Angel, even. It's a little more, uh, you know, not Dio-esque, but uh, his guitar playing is especially Wild One. I mean, that yeah. just, well, what, what a great way to start an album. Oh, I agree. I mean, here, uh, this came out, uh, just like the last album, I'm still laid back about this. And uh, to me, this is when Dio started becoming, like, solo guy to me because here okay here's another guitar player right right and it, it, back when this came out this guy's like at the time three years younger than me like a 17 year old kid playing a deal with the, you know <laughs> and, and, and it was a little yeah. i think it's a little sounding different than well they have different drummer too i mean uh, it's, it's, a it's a whole different it's a whole different band it's a whole different band, band. A whole different band. Yeah. And, and that's where it went from say the band deal to being deal now, BB, let me ask you: Is the reason why you like this album so much is because Rowan Robin- Robertson's story is very similar to Zach Wilde's story? <laughs> is there a Maybe. shaven and unshaven Rowan? Yeah, Robert? I was gonna say is, is Rowan Robertson. Yeah, it's, it's his beard. hair. It's, it's his hair beard. now. <laughs> it's, 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 I was gonna say, yeah. I don't think you're Rowan and unbearded. There's a long-haired Rowan and a not so long-haired Rowan. But just like uh, Dream Evil, when I matured and came back to it, when was that? Yesterday. Musically. Oh, okay. Yesterday. All right. Musically. All right. Musically. <laughs> this morning when he listened to it. Clear that out. Uh, okay. Musically. Yeah. Disclaimer there on the bottom. Disclaimer there when I be sure musically, <laughs> I came back and gave it more listen. And it, again, it's, and he is. But it's definitely an album, again, because for me, it had to grow on you. Yeah. The other ones got you. These you had to listen yeah. to. The first two, the first two were like, exactly. Cool. Even the third one was like, yeah, and then Dream Evil, and this one had a was a grower, not a shower. A grower, not a shower. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, I remember when I picked this one up, uh, like Wow One. I was like, holy shit, because I, I I had read in a previous article about Rowan Robertson coming into the band and, and being a you know young young gunslinger and. And you're right, so, I mean, he was, like, four years younger, four or five years younger than me. You, yeah. And I'm like, holy fuck, I'm like, this kid tears it up. It's a, it's a, it is a departure in sound, I think. There's some very bright points on this album for me. Wild One, Born on the Sun, Hey Angel. My Eyes is a really good song at the end. It's it's a middle-of-the-road album for me, though. I, I I like it, and I don't like it. I think it's a little, it's a little too mid-tempo for me overall. Uh, starts out, comes out of the box, wild one, then born on the sun, hey angel, and then you got between two hearts is like, oh, it's like a deal, like ballad, like oh, <laughs> come on, people. Um, night music is good. Lock up the wolves. I, I could live without that song too. I, I don't know why. Sorry, BB. Um, I can no, definitely I, no, live I like that. the solo. I like the solo um, better than the song. Um, um, good, uh, Evil on Queen Street. That's actually the name of a sandwich at a deli. Really? Somewhere in New York, I Let's think I want to say. Uh, maybe not New York, but it is the name of a, a, a sandwich. Um, I just read that somewhere like yesterday. Um, Twisted, why are they watching? It's 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 a middle of the road album for me. I, I really love the beginning of the album. It comes out like like you know like Gangbusters, and and I love I love Rowan's tone though. I think he, he sounds yeah. really good, and um, and I and I don't know what happened with him either. Like what what took place if they felt the album didn't do you know so good. You know we're gonna. Yeah, but at that time, regroup or whatever. But, I, I think but there was a, so much shit out there. I think too. there's more mediocre songs on this album yes, than yes. any of the other ones. Where I agree, it, it, it's tough to find the ones that really jump and grab you. I agree. With the, every other album before this, yeah, he was Sacred Heart with the, with some of the, that, that had the keyboard in it was a, a, a definitely deterrent from the deal of, of the first two albums. Those songs grabbed you. I mean, even don't talk to strangers, man. That, that uh, in the, the that's time killer. frame that this came out. Music is getting it's getting overloaded to me. There, every band was getting signed. I mean, you had to look and you had to hit on. You're being signed, and it just this is when it was killing itself. 
This is the, the see, but this was the metal without the hair. For me, there, there wasn't there wasn't the, that hair metal and, and all the makeup and shit that I didn't particularly care for. Well, I don't think you, you have the hooks on this song on this no. album no. as much either. Right. You, you, you don't have that that grab factor that that, that, that pulls you in and makes you want. Because like after I listen to a song like Between Two Hearts, like the fourth song of the album, I'm like oh, just like yeah, what's next? Don't... You know what I mean? Like I, I just I need to something to to keep my interest. And I remember listening to this uh, in prep for this. And uh, I, I like the album, I do, I do, but it's and if you're looking very at middle of the credit, road for me. Roberts is getting a lot of the music credits yeah, on oh, too, so maybe that's why, because it, maybe it probably wasn't, I, I don't know about the commercial success of it or, or, or the tour success with this album, um, if, if, if the fan base saw a difference, right. but he didn't stick around for as, as good as he is. He didn't, he didn't, yeah, yeah it, it, uh, uh, 61 in the, in the U.S. charts, it ended up. Which isn't bad for as much shit, because I mean, it's got the Dio name on it. It's but gonna, it's, deal. it's gonna, you know, it's, deal. it's yeah, gonna, but, you know, but it, it was a deal. It, you know what I mean? It was like, it's deal. It was different, but it was deal. different deal. How's that? Okay, right. I'll give you that PC. I'll give you that. <laughs> um, I mean, I, I mean, there's definitely um, songs that are are gonna be on my playlists that, um, you know, definitely, uh, the, like I'm gonna put. If I did a deal with Greatest Hits album, I, I don't think I'd have a song from this album. I would have at least Wild One on there. Maybe Born on the Sun. But no. hey, those songs will be on our playlist on Spotify. <laughs> <laughs> yes, they will. Wild One, yeah. Wild One, Wild yeah. One I think, is and the solo in, in Wild One is, is, is just ripping. And I remember there was a... Uh, BC, remember that, that video magazine that used to come out on, on DVD oh, or... VHS. VHS, right? Oh, what the hell is and, it called? and they were in the studio with with this version of Dio. Yeah. And I remember them showing Rowan Robertson just sitting there playing Wild One, and it was like just amazing just to see him play. But I love that. that I love that, that kind of shit. I do too. Where well, you see them creating it, the I, just, I love stuff, that. Just the raw shit of it. Maybe and Angel. What the fuck is Maybe that? Maybe Angel. I throw on a great Hey Angel. Okay. Yeah. Hey Angel. All right. So yeah. like, um, yeah. So what year was that? Great. 90. So that's 90. So three years later, they 90? come out with, with Strange Highways. Another guitar player. I'm sorry. We're not doing the, the Sabbath. We're going, we're, going, we're going straight through? Yeah, we'll go straight okay. through. Dehumanizer. Straight he, he went back to the Black Sabbath and they did Dehumanizer um, in between Lock Up the Wolves and then Strange Highways. Great album. And we talked Which about Which is great. And we did. We, did a, we reviewed that on one of our episodes. And, okay. it, and it was it's just a, a great album. One of... <clears throat> one of a pinnacle, I think. Uh, I I don't know. I could I could maybe even be one of my my maybe my favorite Black Sabbath album with Dio, Dehumanizer. I was on record as well. phenomenal. I'm gonna go off the. And people are probably gonna give me grief for this, but I think there's something about Dio. Dio is Dio. Dio's Elf. Dio is is Rainbow to me. But there's something about Dio with Black Sabbath where his voice just really shines. He just brings it. Because you know, you're so used to listening to Ozzy really, for so many years. But even Dehumanizer, all those years later, I mean, it, it, he just brings he it. He seems a little more polarized, maybe. He's out there, he's just really pushing, and it's he's got that, that his voice has that twinkle in it. I don't know if it's the delay they use on it where he doesn't use a lot of that kind right. of stuff. If it's the studio work, but he just brings it with with the with all the stuff that he's done with Black Sabbath. And I like to think it's the dichotomy of like he has this just like angelic voice and like there's this like dark for, foreboding music. And, and on it's just that, like a, on that album, Geezer Butler's play. I mean, my oh, rules. Yeah. That's that's as a bass player, you know, that's what you want. Is for me, who doesn't play the same song the same way twice. How you walk and run into things. His playing on those albums are just phenomenal. And, and yeah. Dehumanizer is one of those things where he's. You, you can't turn away from every instrument. It's just a great piece of work. Yeah. But he sh- deal shines on. Absolutely, absolutely. And I'm, I'm glad you said that because I totally, I totally skipped over that. Because I was wondering why they had such long in between. Because at this point, because at this point, because there's still like one, two years every. You know, you're getting an album. And I and I totally skipped over that. And uh, I apologize, Black Sabbath fans out there. And we did do, we did talk about that. On that was that was a BB pick, I think. I want to yeah. say. Um, it was. It's still a good yeah, pick, BB. Love, love that album. Yeah, it's, it is great. So go out there and listen to Dehumanizer. It's kick ass. And the album version of uh, 
Time Machine. Time Machine is way better than the one that's on the movie soundtrack, by the way. Um, <laughs> all right. So whatever happens with Black Sabbath, not sure once again uh, what, what took place there. Um, back into the D.O. groove. And uh, <laughs> back, back to the D.O. groove. <laughs> Um, it comes out with Strange you Highways. Guys, you guys are all on the same page. <laughs> <laughs> um, new guitar player, Tracy G. I will try to pronounce his actual last name, Gry Jalava. Yeah, that's it. Of course. All right, that's a, that's a drink. No wonder he goes by Tracy G. I wonder why. Total, I think, uh, departure in guitar sound on this album. Um, there, there's some good rocking shit on this album. I, I'll tell you what, I... I I, I really there's some stuff from the Tracy G the two albums that I really really like, and there's some stuff that I really really uh, don't like. But uh, we'll let BB tell us his his story first. All right, uh, Strange Highways, uh, Tracy G. I think I think Tracy G as a guitar player, at least for my ears, this is the closest to Black Sabbath you're gonna hear with with his guitar playing. I think it. I don't know what it is on this album. I just it's very dark and it's angry. Uh, Jesus, Mary and the Holy Ghost. It starts with that screeching riff in the beginning, which is fucking fantastic. And in uh, Hollywood Black, it's the the solo is so deep and dark, and he does he keeps doing this pick scratching stuff, which is cool. Probably the the best in my eyes and ears. Uh, one foot in the grave. The solo and one foot in the grave is fucking fantastic. And. Uh, I, I even like the uh, Give Her the Gun. It's, it starts off a little slow, a little ballad, and then you get a little rocker guitar back in there, so you get a little you know a little bit of best of both worlds. But uh, not one of my favorite albums, but Tracy G as a guitar player, it, it, he, really carry, he really carries himself well on this album. I, I agree. I mean, it, it, to me, it's, it's a complete departure from the, you know, it, it, these, t- the two albums, and it's nothing wrong against Tracy G. I like his playing. I, I'm with you one foot in the grave. That that's his to me it's his best work on the album, but it's just a from from a melodic perspective, from a tempo perspective, uh, from a personnel perspective. I mean, I love Jeff Pilson, don't get me wrong, but it's just it's not to be banned. In, in, in those songs that are slow and, and and slow moving, they're good, but it's almost like one heartbeat through the whole song and or through the entire album for me. And it, I don't know that people are not going to appreciate it, but it doesn't do it for me. Right. Like this album, sure. I would. Both, yeah. to be honest, but the Strange Highways does not do it for me. Like, a, but one one foot in the grave is a killer solo. Yeah. He is a great guitar player. But it's oh, not deal to me. Yeah. Strange Highways, this, this mm. as soon as I put it on, got me back in the deal. I don't know what it, I mean. The sound of it, I mean, it's a departure from the deal sound, but you still there is you can hear deal in it. There's a little bit more glimmers of hope. Of the you could hear a deal in the background, but it was definitely a different sound, a bass. I mean, just but the guitar playing is very underrated, I think. And Tracy G, I think, is an underrated guitar player. I mean, he never got, I think, the proper respect he should have for his time and deal, but because we saw him live, and I think he was a phenomenal guitar player. Because, I mean, like you said, so much. When you sit there and listen to the songs and don't think it's deal and just listen to the guitar playing, Tracy G, damn it. <laughs> you gotta... I enjoy I enjoy this album. I think it's it's got some rockin' stuff on there and it's got some songs that are kind of a departure from how a, a, a deal song actually comes out. And I just hate like the last two albums like Lock Up the Wolves and Strange Highways. Um, the title tracks are without a doubt in my mind the worst two tracks on both of those albums. Are the title tracks? I, I I think they're horrible. Strange Highways is just it's too you know strange of a song. I I, I don't I don't like it. I, I I don't get that song. Hollywood Black is good. Evolution is good. One Foot in the Grave is fantastic. Give her the gun. I could definitely live without. Um, here's to you. Reminds me of a Budweiser commercial. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It really does. I always think of Budweiser <laughs> when I when I hear that song. But um, Cause you like I love the, uh, the the plotting and the the uh, the dives that he does on Firehead when you get that down to that kind of plotting uh, background music and you get See, I those. Like, I like that, but a lot of these songs, like for me, they're six minutes long. It is That's a long album. It's like it, it incredibly long. These guys have three, four, five, six songs on this album that are five minutes 
four, four and a half yeah. to six minutes plus with that just that driving yeah. tone. Yeah. It's and like Strange Highways which is, is different is, for me. Is yeah. the longest song on there, and I I, I just that's one that the I long, would just it's a long hit the intro. Skip it's a long you know, yeah. Like, and that wasn't deal. It wasn't getting to the point of the song. It was just for me a lot of stuff on the beginning and the end. I mean. I guess love it, but I love the heaviness of this. It, it is. I mean, it's it's a heavy album. I, I think it's great. Yeah, I, I know think, we're talking about guitar plays, but the, I think after I think um, Lock Up the it Wolves, so theme, different. I can right. see yeah. where you're coming from. Yeah. But I think it's more of a a, a rocking album, more of a, a like a riff heavy and solo than the last. Two. Than the last. At, at least, least the, at least Strange Highways for me, or not Strange Highways. <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, Lock Up the Wolves. Lock Up the Wolves. Um, I, and, 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 and nothing against that that album, but it's uh, I, I do like this one better than Lock Up the Wolves. Uh, I think we're we're starting to climb up a little bit, a little bit more up the ladder. Bang! Bang! <laughs> they stick with Tracy G, pretty much. And actually, I'm sorry. Before we uh, go any further, Strange Highways was the first album that they brought in an outside producer. Mike Frazier produced that album, and not Ronnie James Dio. So You're that may have been like a, you know, like a maybe part of the kick in the ass that they got to bring them up on, bring them back. So they, they pretty much toured that pretty good. They stuck with pretty much the same band, uh, still Tracy G, and they, they bring out Angry Machines. Um, BB, Angry Machines. Come on. Uh, once again, it, uh, like you said, it's a little bit dark, a little bit uh, Black Sabbath-ish. A couple of, the, couple of songs that I, I wrote down uh, don't tell the kids. I think that's a really cool, fast, great solo, almost a little Pantera-ish. You know, even with Black, Black's another, another fast riffing, uh, great solo song. I really like. I I've, I've been a fan of this song since this album ever came out. But it's Double Monday. Oh. It's super heavy in the beginning, mm -hmm. and there's like that acoustic middle, and then it goes back to like real heavy riffs. It's just a an amazing roller coaster of a song musically. And uh, Tracy G just think he think he does another you no know, you know, he does pretty good for for himself on the on this album. Uh, okay, uh, don't tell the kids for me. That's that's my favorite. That that's his, his best work I think on, on the album. I agree. Uh, Double Monday as well. Uh, I, I believe reading I I recall reading an article years ago that this was Dio's least favorite album that he did. I don't know if it's his writing. I don't know if it's it, again what 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 it is the lineup or, or whatever. But he wasn't particularly. Keen up on this, this particular yeah. album, uh, it, it, it it mimics the other one. Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a little faster. It doesn't have that same mundane to me, um, but it, it's that same formula. Um, not not one of my favorites, but I I, I like it better than uh, the first Tracy G. Again, this picked up right where uh, Strange Highways took off. I think the heaviness. So you must love this one. I, I yeah. yeah, and this is when we saw him live. Yes, down it takes. Down, down it takes. But I, I mean. Don't Tell the Kids is great black. Hunter of the Heart, stay out of my mind, even for a, like a slower tune. Uh, again, BB, Double Monday to me is one of my favorites. Big Sister, I mean, this is to me my favorite Tracy G album. Yo. <laughs> I'm a little bit in the middle of the road of this album. Institutional Man, I think, is terrible. I, 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 I don't know, that song does not connect with me at all. Not a good start. Um, don't Tell the Kids is fantastic. Don't yeah. Tell the Kids is like... That's a great that should have opened I think up that should have, definitely. That, yeah. that, that, that song should have been like right up on top there. Black is great. Hunter of the Heart, that's the song that they featured Tracy G live on. He didn't have a solo per se, but this was the song where the, the Ronnie left the stage and the band just kind of laid back and played the, the groove of the... If you listen to the song when it fades out, you get that... Uh, the, the, the bass and the drums in the background. This is the part where they stretch this song out live and Tracy G just absolutely tore the roof off of the place on this song and it was absolutely amazing. Definitely my favorite uh, Tracy G song. If you listen to, there's a live album that came out and this album is on, it's, uh, I forget, the, I, don't, I don't know the name of it. It's one of the live albums that's out there, I'm sorry. If you see a, a deal live album and it has Hunter the Heart on there, Inferno, listen to this song. Last in Line. Inferno, Last in Inferno, Last in Line. Um, listen, listen to that version of Hunter the Heart on there. It is absolutely amazing. Um, Stay Out of My Mind, eh, longest song on there. Um, written solely by Jeff Pilson. I'm sorry, Jeff, that song is terrible. Um, I, 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 don't, I don't connect with that song at all. Big Sister's okay. Double Monday's fantastic. Golden Rules I really like. 
Dying in America is kind of like a little, I don't know, mid-tempo or like bebopping along kind of song, I think. Uh, it's not bad. And uh, This Is Your Life, I could I could live without also. But um, great, great album. Like if, if I could just pick those couple songs off of there. I think this, these two Tracy G albums remind me of Guns N' Roses, Use Your Illusions 1 and 2. You could put these albums together, take off the crappy songs, and have one absolutely kick-ass fucking album. Yeah. I, Ooh, I, I think, like that analogy. Yeah, yeah. I, I would that that's what I would do with the the Tracy G era of of Dio. I would mash them two albums together, take the crappy songs out. Institutional Man would be the first song that would be gone. That would, <laughs> yeah, that would, that would be cut automatically. And um, looking for Institutional Man. <laughs> Oh, this is your latest. I, I'd rather them uh, play institutionalized by uh, suicidal tendencies than see them play institutional man on, uh, from Angry Machines. But what do you guys think about there? Uh, which Tracy G album do you think is the best? What do you mm. think out there? Uh, let us know. Um, I know I'm going to catch shit to it. I know <laughs> even when you watch the videos, you, this is the best deal album ever. This is the best deal album ever. And I'm thinking, really? Then not for me, at least. But uh, you, you, it, it's all it's all let taste. It rain. It's all let it rain. And it all has to do with what you're what you're what right. whatever else you listen to, you know what you're gonna what you're gonna like. And like I said, I, I would just pick and choose songs off those two albums and just make my one master Tracy G Dio album. Um, before we uh, we got uh, three albums to, to do uh, after this, uh, we're gonna take a little quick break. We're gonna do our hidden gems. And it's going to be BB. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> um, I'm just going to do a little song. Um, we're going to go with the Electric Boys with Lips and Hips. Just an iconic song, 1988. You know, this is a family podcast. Oh, I'm sorry. Gritty. We're going to we're going to go um, The Lord Liveth in Me. <laughs> Definitely in number 475. Okay. Um, in no, your hymnal. Elect- <laughs> in your hymnal. Uh, Electric Boys, a great band, another one of those bands that never really made it. Lips and Hips, just a catchy, catchy harmonic tune with the with the typical '80s groove to it. Just a if you know, a guy like me, born in the '80s, listen to this. This this is a this is one of the one of the songs I remember playing. But uh, so get out there and listen to the Electric Boys. Boys, Boys. and girls, and girls. Electric lips and or hips. Lips Electric and. boys with lips and hips. Lips and hips. Together. Good song. Uh, I'll have to get on that <laughs> Good pronto. Album, I'll get on that pronto. Dave, what do you got for us? <laughs> All right. Uh, 2006, uh, the band Army of Anyone. Uh, brought up to me by uh, our drummer and good buddy of mine, Jeremy Woody. Shout out to Jeremy Woody. Uh, it, it is the, uh, I guess uh, for lack of a better term, I'm going to call it a super group. Because it is made... It, when, when Scott Weiland it, from STP is on one of his heroin hiatuses, I believe, uh, the, the Leo brothers, Dean and Robert, get together with Richard Patrick from Filter, and um, it's Ray Luzier, I believe, is, uh, who drum with, uh, I believe he's with David Watt. He does some drumming with Korn. Uh, but these guys get together and they kick in 2006 and they punch out one album, that's it. Um, but it's, it's a great piece of work. If you like Filter, if you like it, it's got that Stone Temple Pilot vibe to it, and it's got those Filter lyrics because he can sing. Uh, it's a really nice piece of work. It's one shot. They talked about getting back together in 2014. It didn't happen, but uh, it, it's a great listen. I mean, from start to finish, there's not a bad song. If you like STP, they're worth a listen, without a doubt. Army of Anyone. Yes. What about the new STP? What do you think of that singer? It's okay. It's okay? <laughs> I just wondering. It's okay. It's okay. I haven't checked that out yet. Dylan. Uh, my hymn gem is a song that Dio performed on on a tribute album. It was off of Humanary Stew, a tribute to Alice Cooper, and he performs Welcome to My Nightmare with Bruce Kula. Is it, is it Bruce or Bob that performs on it? Bob. It's, it's Mr. Yeah, it's Bob. It's Bob Kula. Mr. Kula. Um, uh, who else is on there? Uh, Steve Lukather's on there. Steve Lukather, yep. Yeah, uh, Phil, Phil Sassoon, um, Randy Castillo, and Paul Taylor. Uh, it's a really cool version. I mean... Dio singing anything, you know it's going to be good. Sure. So it's cool to hear him do the theatricality of "Welcome to My, to my Nightmare," uh, and the, the rest of the yeah. album's really good too. There's a cool version of uh, uh, "Schools Out" that Dave Mustaine sings. Roger Daltrey does an awesome version of "No More Mr. Nice Guy," and I'm, I'm a huge Who fan, so that was that was great. But. Yeah, that that's a great tribute album, and we're talking about Dio guitar players and Steve Lukather, absolutely 
is amazing on the solo on that song. And um, I just I, I talked about last episode. I think I talked about uh, listening to his yep. audio book. And uh, I just finished it up. It is amazing. It's called The Gospel According to Luke. What an amazing career this guy has had. He has played with everybody. Um, he's played with all the original living Beatles at the time. You know, George Harrison has since passed away. But just an amazing, amazing career. You guys, if you like good uh, you know, rock stories and, and you want to hear a lot of cool names and some crazy, crazy shit, uh, read this book. I, I totally recommend the audio book over the book because it's him narrating it and it's just like a guy bullshit with you in a bar. It's fucking amazing. Okay, sorry, hijack your pick on. Yeah. You see, what do you got? I'm going to go with the promotional ad here for my boys. I'm, a, I'm an 80s music lover and uh, here's a melodotic band from the 80s, uh, Roxanne, with their debut album. It was cranking great and then they kind of disappeared due to lack of label but uh, they're back in 2018 with a brand new album coming out tomorrow or week whatever it may be uh radio silence and just here's a good band that was got lost in the shuffle back in the day and overall just good classic aor rock that's a that's a great stick song i was gonna say is that the radio silence song from the mission <laughs> oh it might be <laughs> it's a cover. that was actually that was actually one of the songs i really enjoyed off that album it was one of the 10 great songs on that album <laughs> um, very cool. B- I, BC uh, just got that in the mail today. Yeah. And um, it was like Christmas. What an amazing package they put together for this uh, for this release. They had a, a, a red like swirly uh, vinyl oh, and uh, the vinyl, the CD, uh, and then it was a copy of their first debut album on CD, which I never saw. You can never find it. I've only ever seen it on cassette. I've seen it. I have vinyl and cassette until today. And then, uh, like, uh, some stickers and some other promotional stuff and a, a cassette of the new album, which I guess there's an underground world of cassette lovers nowadays. And I don't think it's going to catch on like vinyl right. is, but... Uh, I, think it's, you, I think it's Guardians of the Galaxy that's sort of that trend up. Is it? it, it see, I, I'm, they're not the, I mean, I've seen, like, a handful of people start yeah, doing you're, it now. You're, you're, this uh, is my theory. Your record player is not going to eat your tape. No, but well, you know, it, it, they're kind of tough to find a, a cassette player now. So I mean, yeah. if you had you know old stereo equipment or a walkman, hang on to it, it, on to it or walkmans are tough to find. Yeah, they really are. But I mean, BC sent me pictures of the uh, the package that they sent. It was it was great. T-shirt. I'll tell you what. Yeah, well, it's just. They, they, they put together a, a great, package great package. Yeah. Yeah. I almost forgot that. It was, it was excellent because he, he says, like, holy shit, look at all this stuff. And he's like sending me like eight pictures. I'm like, holy fuck. Because so, I kept opening and like they're stuffed up. I'm like, oh, what's this? I'm like, it's like your own uh, Roxanne vault. <laughs> it, it was like the vault and I was like Christmas morning. Like, Woo. All right. Um, for my g- good pick, BC, excellent pick. Um, I, I can't wait to actually hear their, their new album, uh, those, those guys. Because they... They have a song out. There's a video. George Lynch plays on it. Yes. It is a very. Uh, we'll have to post that uh, the video because it's very very cool. George Lynch plays in it, and the uh, girls the in. scenery in it is is very yeah. enticing. You're talking about the, the uh, sport, yeah. the yeah. the ca- classic car. Right? Yeah. <laughs> um, my my pick. I'm gonna stick. Uh, this is gonna be a song. It's uh, gonna stick with the Dio theme here. It's uh, the opening track from the uh, Tenacious D and the Pick of Destiny uh, soundtrack and movie. It's called Kickapoo. It's uh, it's a hilarious song. It's uh, you know the first first licks uh, licks yeah <laughs> first lyrics of the song are a long ass fucking time ago in a town called Kickapoo. There lived a humble family, religious through and through. And it's uh, if you've seen the movie before, it's a it's a great uh, it's a great movie. It's funny. It's uh, got Jack Black in it. And then um, he's singing this song, and then the door busts open, and his meatloaf is his dad, and his dad sings uh, some parts in the songs, and then like he tells him that Jesus loves his bro- older brother more than he loves him, and then um, he's asking Dio for help. Like his father goes away, he's like, Dio, can you hear me? I'm lost and so alone. I'm asking for your guidance. Won't you poster, right? come he's down from your throne? Dio poster. Yeah. Behind his door or something. And, and then Dio comes out and he sings. It is, it is. you know, I hear I hear you, brave young Jables. Uh, you are hungry for the rock, but to learn the ancient methods, sacred doors you must unlock. Escape from your father's clutches in this oppressive neighborhood. On a journey you must go to find the land of Hollywood. Uh, now, it's, 
it's 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 funny. It, it it's a great way to open the movie. I've heard he did that in one take. That the performance in that album. Oh, I believe it. I believe it. And uh, hey, you can't go wrong in a movie. You know, the first four minutes of the movie, you got Dio on it. Yep. yep. And they had they had originally on their first album had a song about Dio. Um, granted, it was about like, hey, Dio, maybe you should, uh, you know, stop because you're getting really old now. But um, you know, they they eventually managed to snag the man himself for for their hit movie. Well, it wasn't really a hit movie. It was actually kind of kind of not, not but, a hit, but. <laughs> but it's a it's a good underground movie, good yeah. uh, like cult movie if if you if you want to put mm-hmm. it in that kind of light. And that came out in two thousand six, by the way. Um, so there's our hidden gems, you guys. I hope you guys are checking this stuff out. We got um, Kickapoo for me. We have Roxanne for BC, Electric Boys, All Hips and Lips, and uh, we got Welcome to My Nightmare from the Dio uh, tribute album, Humanary Stew, um, with with Dio doing um, Welcome to My Nightmare with the awesome Steve Luke they're on. Good lead guitar on that one. And uh, we have Dave's pick, which is cool, which is, is actually very interesting to me, which I'm going to check out. It's called Army of Anyone, and it's got guys from Filter. It's got Scott Whalen in it, and uh, we will definitely have to check it out. We'll, we'll post something from these guys, and I hope you guys enjoy them. And uh, we'll zip right back into the D.O. world. They came out in 1998 with the uh, Inferno uh, Last in Live album with Tracy G, and that kind of put a, a you know an exclamation point on that period of the band, and then they they moved on with uh, Dio's pretty much first concept album called Magica. I'm not going to go into the story; it's it's kind of weird. Listen to it. Um, listen to it. <laughs> yeah, you could actually it's listen 14. to it. Yeah, <laughs> it reminds me of like the story of where Murray comes from. You know what I mean? Like if if you read his thing of where right how he comes and he he's the only guy that could, it, it, it has that bizarre <laughs> it, twist. It, to it, it does. It, it it's interesting. It's interesting. But um and he comes out with Magica and we have the return of Craig Goldie. Comes back into it. Uh, Magica BB. Um I don't know why I don't know why there's so much hatred for this album cuz it's not bad. I I really like the, the the guitar in orchestra in like the Magica theme, uh, Fever, Dreams, and Turn to Stone. There's some great guitar parts in there. It, and it almost mimics, I, I wish I could remember the beat of the, of the guitar riff that he runs. Cause I really think Fever, Dreams is a little higher and then Turning to Stone, it's the same riff. It's just maybe like on a, it's like a, different string or something. Yeah, you almost think it's the same tune. It's yeah, it, it sounds uh, very similar, but really cool, great tunes. And uh, I'm even a big fan of the, as long as it's not about love. It, I don't know why, it's it's a slower acoustic start. Mm-hmm. And it gets heavy. It's almost like a, a church hymn type thing, but, but the guitar work in it acoustically is really, really good. But then once we get towards the end and you do that... Uh, losing my insanity it's like a renaissance song and you know it, it really it lost me there for for a little bit but overall I, I, I thought it was a not not as bad as everybody says it is <laughs> <laughs> fuck everybody it's not as bad as everybody says it is it's growing on me. I, I, it's growing. It, it grew on me too. I have to say that because Goldie was back, and you could tell that 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 formula is back again uh, as well. Um, I would agree. Fever dreams. It really rips. Um, I think it's Chalice is a Chalice. I'm, I'm, that's another one on the deluxe edition. Annika's a great tune, um, but I, I think it was it was back. It's it's kind of odd because you're not used to the direction that usually Dio songs have a direction that they're going in or what he's writing about this one deviates from that greatly yeah. um, so it, t- it takes a while to get used to uh, at least his lyrics because when you're in tune to his lyrics he writes a, a particular style and this certainly deviates from that for me at least but but the guitar playing is, is killer coming back uh, it takes a while to get into it with you know this discovery in, in that theme and then Lord of the Last Day it's like all right let's let's get going here let's move on I've got like five <laughs> minutes into this baby let's go uh, but then by when, when Fever Dreams and Turn Just Don't Come Around it really just kicks in um, good like from coming after the previous two it, it's a good return for me I agree with Dave here, and I mean, here it is, the Goldie's back in the band, there's a lot of hype about this album, and like I said, the first three ones are a little 
Mm. <laughs> and then it kicks into fever dreams, turn to stone, feed my head, and I was like, all right, I'm liking this. And uh, there's a, f- a few spots out there that kind of lose me a little bit, but overall, I like this album, even when they talk about it in the story at the very end of... Yeah. <laughs> um, I I was uh, kind of, as the uh, BB's thinking was, like, ah, like, Magicka, like... And I still blame Kiss for this shit, like, with fucking concept albums. The Elder still has me ruined for the initial, as soon as I hear concept album, like, fuck. Get nervous. But... <laughs> Like a lot of good concept albums, uh, musically and or lyrically, theme wise or whatever, um, this this is 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 good. Like you said, the first couple, I love the magic of theme. It reminds me of uh, like TSO kind of, yeah, definitely something like that. Um, which which I like that stuff. Nightwish, if you will, yeah. guys. Uh, BC um, kind of gives me that little bit of that vibe. But then too busy. When you hit like Fever Dreams, like Lord of the Last Day is 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 you're picking up a little bit, not a whole lot, but then once you hit Fever Dreams and Turn to Stone, Feed My Head, like Ariel is great, and, yes. and that's the longest song in the album. That's like like seven minutes and twenty five, but uh, Chalice is great as long as it's not about love. Sorry, BB, I can live without that one. <laughs> Losing my insanity, uh, that kind of loses me too. Other World is is good. Um, the reprise of Magic is good, and Lord of the Last Day reprise is is good, and it's. And actually, if you listen to the story on, on the on the version of it where Dio's, it's cool to hear the man talk. Yep. Yeah. His, his it, voice, even in, it in, really in concert, because he doesn't sound yeah. like what he would yeah. sing like. That's you can, re, you can really, you're, you just kind of, um, he's got like a soothing, you get speaking voice. Yep. He, yeah. he really does. And, uh, it would have been awesome to hear him do like a whole book. Like a, well, audio. this was supposed to be part of it a trilogy, supposed, if I'm not mistaken. It was supposed yeah. to be Magicka 2 and Magicka 3. Because right? Craig Goldie yeah. said they were working on songs for part 2 right. when, when he got when he got sick. I think they had one release. From they two. had one one or two songs. Like, Electra, like, I think is it? Yeah. Um, Electra and there was something else too that was uh, they had in the works, at least right. the, the basic... The tracks of the song. That's a shame. And um, it would have been cool to see where where they went with that, um, you know, musically and you know, story wise. But uh, guitar wise on this album, I think uh, you have that. Okay, here's that back. Here's that just that. Does, gives another testament to the you're, man. You're back. Yeah. He's doing other things in between writing that yeah. trilogy, and he still he's comes back, moving, and you, you have know? that bang. You're right, right back in there, and. Um, uh, I, I have you know newfound respect for Craig Goldie. Not that I disrespected him you know um, at all, but once you delve into these to these songs more and uh, listen to the different styles of these guys, uh, you know, and I think Craig Goldie is as close as you're going to get to the original um, guitar sound of Dio. But uh, Magic is a it's it's a misunderstood album. Yeah. I think I think it's a misunderstood yeah. album. Then the, the computer talking, I didn't... Yeah, I can't live without that shit, too. It didn't, didn't really grab it's, either, it's, but... It's distracting. There's so many... It's distracting. The hidden, whole concept thing... Hidden gems in that, in that album. Like, like you said, I think the concept thing, like, uh, people get nervous around it. Right. Yeah, as soon as you hear that, you're kind of like, uh, uh, Yeah. And Jimmy but, Bain's back on this album, too. Yeah. That's a nice thing. They get done with that. Once again, Craig Goldie is off doing, you know whatever another you know two year in between albums and they come out with killing the dragon i'll say my piece when it's when it's my turn because I, I definitely got something to say about this album uh go ahead bb okay well then every, then the way you sold that you're gonna fall off your chair because i think this in the do catalog this is the third best album yeah. this fucking album to me doug aldridge brings such a great addition to this band his guitar sound with his i, I believe he plays like Gibson, I believe. He plays Les Paul. Les Paul. Now, let me tell you, let, that that sound, every song on this album is fucking amazing. Doug Aldridge is an all-star on this album. And I don't I don't know if this kind of catapulted his his career. Because I don't know if he was if I don't know if this is his He was first in Burning album. Rain before this. Oh, that's right. Which is a phenomenal yes. band. But this is this is just another notch in, the, in in his belt because the um, the songs that are on this album are just tear it up, fucking amazing. It starts with killing the dragon it, right out of the gate. It's such a it's such a great high pitched solo, and then uh, 
Another, another uh, along came a spider. Fucking great, fast riff, great tone to his, to his, to his solo. And then better in the dark. It's, it's, it brings me back to the first two albums with a little bit better riff in it. And then even, the, even a uh, rock and roll. It's such a, it's he, he brings a, like a controlled solo. There's, it just smooth. It flows smooth right through the song. There's nothing crazy and you know bending strings. He just shows you here. I'm just gonna go nice and slow on this one and just cruise up the countryside and just and just play these riffs. But uh, yeah, like I said before, this this fucking album is fucking amazing. All right, <laughs> um, I agree with you. Uh, for me, wow. uh, this is the first album for me personally that. Uh, since Vivian Campbell leaves, it doesn't take nine times to listen to the album for it to grab you and pull you in, like the deal of old. Uh, Killing the Dragon is, is just rips. That, that's my favorite on there. Uh, Doug Aldridge, even though he's he's not on any of the other lineups, he brings it, and he sounds like he should be in deal. Uh, the band. Yeah. Well, the band deal, not the solo <laughs> artist deal, but now all of a sudden he's bringing it. Uh, again, rock and roll, better in the dark. Um, even throw away children. I, I, it, it's just it, it's an album that you didn't have to listen to again for me five six times. To say, yeah, I, this is kind of growing on me. It, it, it gets you right from the beginning, and it's killing the dragon that, that pulls you in for me. This episode is about deal guitarist, and with, uh, next to Vivian, Doug Aldridge to me is. Pff, I mean, there's another. Pff, pff. <laughs> but like Steve said, Doug Aldridge was in uh, Burning Rain, which was a phenomenal band. Even before that, a band Lion. That released two phenomenal albums. Check that out, guys. And uh, here's a guy that is a god on a guitar. I think he, no, no matter who he plays with, he just fits in with them too. It's he's such a phenomenal player in my mind. And like you said, every song on this is like boom, boom. This album made me forget about uh, Greg Goldie and Tracy G. <laughs> okay. Um, I remember when this when this came out. BC calls me up. He's like, "We're gonna go for a ride." Pulls up in front of the house, I jump in. He says, fucking listen to this. Killing the Dragon comes out, I'm like, who the fuck is this? <laughs> and then as soon as deal starts, I'm like, holy shit, this is gonna fucking kick ass. And top to bottom, amazing album. Amazing album. Doug Aldrich, and, and we were very familiar with Burning Rain before this came out. And I, I said to him, I said, who's the guitar player? He said, Doug Aldrich. I'm like, I'm like, the dude from Burning Rain. He's like, yeah, I'm like, holy fuck. Finally. This guy in, in the Burning Rain stuff is phenomenal, Dave. I'll have to check those guys out. I'm gonna have to. I, I know we, we worked with White Snake, I believe, but I he, he was in White Snake right was, after these uh, guys. And he's actually currently in the Dead Daisies, which I'm gonna be seeing. Correct. Um, next You'll week have to let me on the now. Kiss Cruise, which I'll have already seen him by the time you guys are listening to this. Um, You'll have to go live. Yep. Yeah. Um, but Doug Aldrich is amazing. Super cool guy. And, and you look at this guy on stage, this guy is rock star on stage. Um, I always said that um, when Robert Mason is is singing, he that guy is rock and roll. You could see there there's a rock star, this guy. When you see Doug Aldrich up on stage, whether it be with Dio or Whitesnake or Bur I, Burning Rain, I've never seen him with Burning Rain, but I've seen him with, with the other bands, or uh, Dead, Dead Daisies. Daisies. This boom, there that guy's a rock star. Holy fuck, this guy. He, he cool just comes off this guy. And he's an amazing talent. Like just watch him play. Songs like Along Came a Spider, Scream, Better in the Dark. Yeah. When that's when the tempo picks up in that solo, he just absolutely fucking tears it up. Um, even the song Push, probably the most uh, radio friendly poppy song on the album, is still very good. Um, the song Throw Away Children on it, that was supposed to be pretty much um, uh, We're Stars, uh, Feed the Children type thing, part two, but it never uh, came to fruition. Um, and I'm just going to bust away from uh, guitar players for one second in the song Before the Fall. Listen to the fucking keyboard solo on that song. It takes you back to like, boom, this could be a fucking Deep Purple song. The keyboard player is... Um, Scott Warren on there has played on a ton of friggin' albums with a shitload of fucking bands. Look him up, great keyboard player. But the the whole album, it this is a guitar album, and um, and it uh, and it also does make you forget about. It makes me at least forget about 
the Tracy G albums and even lock up the Wolves. Nothing against Tracy G or Rowan Robertson, both phenomenal players, but this album is like, holy shit, definitely one of the top deal Dual albums. Holes, right. Interesting side note, it says here, uh, you know, that he auditioned for Kiss, did not get the gig. That would have been a very interesting, because uh, this guy, this guy could play, without any doubt. Nothing against my Kiss brothers out there, <laughs> but um, I'm glad they didn't. I'm glad they didn't. I, I think he, I think if, if you had Doug Aldrich in Kiss, he would have been as wasted as Vivian Campbell in Def, Def Leppard. Yeah, that's that's my take on it. And nothing against Tommy Thayer, and nothing against uh, you know Vivian Campbell in Def Leppard. Um, but if Doug Aldrich was in Kiss, it it would just be a waste. Stifling. It would be uh, Gene and a Paul waste would not his, be happy. It would be a waste of his talent. I, I just don't think that they would. Tap into his talent. Right, Listen to his stuff with you White. You just stand Smith. there and play. He's good move. buddies with Gene Simmons. Still loves yeah. David. Yeah. Didn't get the game. He's got to be good friends with Gene Simmons because he's on the Kiss Cruise. Fucking like yeah. the last. He wasn't on last year, year before. Um, but uh, an, an amazing player, super cool guy. I, I said hello to him a couple times on uh, Kiss Cruise yeah, Six cool. when he was there. And he just comes out and just hangs and watches the other bands and stuff. Just you know, th- these he's guys are. Cruise too. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. I mean, these guys. Yeah, these guys. You know, you don't mob them. Just come up and say, hey, yeah. you know, you know, good job. You know, good to good to meet you. Whatever. You know, if you don't mob these guys, they'll be cool. You be cool, yeah. they'll be cool. Exactly. Um, but just an, an amazing album. Just like, uh, like I said, when when BC put this in, I was like, holy shit! Just like. Yeah, that beginning riff just uh, it brings it home. It's like, yeah, there we go. We're back. Yeah. We're exactly. back. We're back. back. Absolutely. We're back to 1984. And, um, yeah. So then they, they tour, and actually they came out with the, they did Holy Diver Live with Doug Aldrich, and then they there's a bunch of other songs that's on that live album with Doug playing. Watch the videos, watch the DVD. You say that one. And it's, uh, with the live and, one. and actually it's, a, it's, on it's a live video. release oh. also. So definitely check that out. And then um, after this, Doug goes in uh, to, Wa- to Whitesnake, and then uh, Craig Goldie comes back for... Uh, Master of the Moon, which is the last official Dio album um, before, because he went back to the guys with Sabbath after after this album. So, uh, Master of the Moon, baby. Uh, uh, I didn't like it. It probably it probably my least favorite out of all of them. I don't know why. I don't know what it is. It didn't catch my ear. Uh, the the only bright spot is maybe the 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 solo and I, I am, but it just I, I don't know what it was. It just maybe it's from the progression of Doug Aldridge and then you then you put this one in after that. You're like, uh, maybe if you listen, maybe you listen to them, you know, maybe you listen to two Tracy G's together. Maybe you listen to three Greg Goldie albums. You know, maybe it would be different, but. I don't know. A- after I-, I-, I listened to it twice, and it just didn't grab me. It's okay. Like it, it, it loses its touch. One more for the road is, is a is a punch in the face. I, that's a great song. But I kind of on that similar vein. The rest of it, it takes some some getting used to. Again, like I said, it's like a bell curve for me, um, where it hits a pinnacle in Dio's career. This is. Um, it kind of goes downhill for me oh, as, as a Dio fan. But I I love one more for the road. And again. Uh, <laughs> Goldie's back, and uh, you can tell. You know, so. I agree with uh, BB. I mean, like, you go from Doug Aldrich and just the way that last album came at you. I, I, I mean, I like this album. Don't get me wrong, but I mean, to me, it's a little, it's different because you're changing guitar players. But one for uh, one for the more. Hey, Jesus Christ! One more for the road is good. Uh, Death by Love. I am. I look like the soul in that. But uh. Overall, for Goldie, I like this one. All right, Master of the Moon. Um, Craig Goldie is back. And in the meantime, between Killing the Dragon and uh, the recording of Master of the Moon, Doug Aldrich goes to Whitesnake. Craig Goldie comes back. BC and I go to see Iron Maiden on July 30th, 2003 at Madison Square Garden. And I believe Maiden was on the Edward the Great tour, I want to say. And yes. it was Motorhead, then Dio, then Maiden. And... Um, we were right up on the side, and amazing, amazing set. Because throughout the years, when you've seen Dio, um, he'll do like Long Live Rock and Roll, Man the Silver Round, but they're usually 
Um, and like even Stargazer, they usually be in a medley. They usually see just you know, snippets of these songs and then they'll go into something else. But um, on this one, they opened up with Killing the Dragon, they did Last in Line, and then they start off Stargazer. So I'm thinking, oh, cool. In the hopes, in the hopes were realized they did the whole song of Stargazer. No kidding. Absolutely amazing. I went out of my fucking mind when they did that. And then they went into Stand Up and Shout, Rock and Roll, I Speed at Night, Dream Evil, they even did Rainbow in the Dark, Holy Diver, and Heaven and Hell. Just an absolute. See, you know, that's great. a nice mix of, of yeah. Dio yeah. chronology. And there. just you know, as really and, and Craig Goldie, I'm telling you what, when they did Stargazer, I was like, oh my god, this guy is absolutely fucking amazing. I had a slap. Well, he's got to play he Iomi. He's got to play Blackmore style. He's got to play everybody else's style. Yeah, that, that's hard to do. Yep. And he and he 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 nailed it. He free, and we were right up on the side of the stage. And um, after the show, they're going off. Simon Wright still has a drumstick in his head. I'm like, dude, throw the stick. Boom, throws it up. Boom, I got it. It's at my house. Beautiful. Nice. And actually, my uh, Number of the Beast, Eddie, is holding the Simon Wright drumstick from the Maiden show and a Nico McBrain drumstick from the show. And I'll trade you. I have an Yngwie Malmsteen pick. <laughs> <laughs> I do. And a string. I broke a string and threw it at me. I at one time, I was like... I'm going to stop it solo, but he threw it. You can come up or you can visit the drumstick anytime you want. As for you, sir. You gotta, they're, in, they're in a case. Yeah. Above the mantle. But, I mean, just a, it, it was it was great to, to see Craig Goldie in the back. Uh, definitely miss Doug Aldrich in there. But um, as far as Master of the Moon goes, um, I, I give it a okay. Like like you said, it, it's, a, it's a tough album to really enjoy right after listening to Killing the Dragon. Uh, One More for the Road is really great. Master of the Moon is okay. Um, Shivers is really good. The guitar sound on Shivers is really good. It's, it's a little bit of a different sounding Dio song, I think. Uh, the Man Who Would Be King, I Can Live Without. The, Eye, the Eyes is actually a good song. Mm-hmm. Um, Living the Lie is good. Um, I Am is, is good. Death by Love, uh, actually uh, Chuck Garrick from Alice Cooper's band has a co-write on that song. Um, is is very good. It's 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 a really good album. Uh, if you listen to it as a standalone album, it, it's great. The guitar playing on it is, is fantastic, but it's it's uh, it's way overshadowed, I think, by Killing the Dragon. You can pick and choose. You 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 can pick from all the Dio albums and have a kick ass playlist, but a bulk of your songs are going to be from the first two albums. Yes, and you're going to mix throughout for everything else I think it would be a perfect uh, pick list um, let's uh, we'll go around we'll uh, do our thing uh, Dave when it gets to you uh, go plug your band let us know any shows that are coming up this uh, uh, let us know what's, <laughs> what's going on with Legends with, uh, tomorrow night uh, we'll be there a small piece because it's a beautiful place um, out in, this show would have happened by the Hollywood. time you guys listen to this by yes the way. and uh, Crazy Fingers up in Lake Wampot back there Crazy Fingers okay. so good place just be pop-ups in the day uh, nice nice folks uh, great place and your band is Blue London and where can we find you uh, www.bluelondonband.com Facebook be Blue London because Facebook are jerks hmm. <laughs> uh, I'm sad hmm. he just got banned they're going to shut me down <laughs> <laughs> red flag <laughs> Yeah, great episode. I, I I love Ronnie James Deal. Ever ever since I heard We Rock, it just he just sucked me right in, and just a great episode of going back to the old tunes and the the some of the some of the stuff from maybe like you know Master of the Moon you only heard maybe once or twice, and you kind of threw the CD in the shelf, and you haven't listened to it since you know ten fifteen years, but. Yeah, I, this is this is this is close. One of my favorite ones. I like. I said. I just. I love Dio and just a just a great musician. The, the, his lyrics just blow me away, and he always paints a picture in my head when I listen to him. Uh, Dio for me, uh, it, it reminds you of, as a kid growing up of why you wanted to uh, be a rock and roll. Uh, someone who who just wants to play an instrument and and, and be a, a, try to be a wannabe rock star. Um, I remember writing a paper uh, for my college essay. I actually have written songs when we were first writing stuff, uh, my now wife and I, back in the mid 80s. And two of the songs that I, I wrote ended up being like Dio songs that like I would have ripped him off writing those riffs. What, I had them first, but <laughs> they, they were his They were his thing. That's the way I think. And that's why I can't write songs 
like now because they're too DOS and if you want to do those things. Sonny and Cher does do. I, 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 <laughs> I write about dragons and, and, and those kind of, that's what I write about. Joe doesn't want to see dragons. Because I've, because I've always just been by that. And I, I wrote a, I remember writing a college essay saying that, that was my, my dream, that I was just sitting in the audience, Carbondale Area High School, and Ronnie James Dio just walks out on stage and talks to me and gives me the lyrics to these songs that I got up the next morning and wrote. And uh, it ended up, <laughs> it was pretty much a rip off of an album like Three years later would come, and I thought, thought I was a genius, but not so much. Uh, I just all the, all the deal in my life. But uh, he is uh, the, the entire career. There's one thing about uh, Dio. You know it's Dio when, when you hear him. It, it he's got that he he's rock to me. I mean, rock and that heavy rock. It doesn't have to be screaming. It doesn't have to be anything. Uh, you know, pretty. He's he's rock to me. I agree. I mean, there's a handful of bands. As soon as you, I heard them, I was like hooked and never left. And Dio is definitely one of them. I mean, you cannot go around with Dio. I mean, and the guitar player. I mean, Dio, not to compare him to anybody, but like Ozzy, I think he's always surrounded himself with great talent. Cool. It's kind of funny because I had the same exact thing that you had, Dave. Back when I was in a band, like I was like, you know what? Maybe I could be the main songwriter of the band. And I had one song that was called Wounded Tiger. And I definitely ripped that off. <laughs> like the Ride the Tiger part of Holy Diver. And I'm like, I'm thinking as you're talking, I'm like, gee, that is exactly what I did too. I was ripping off Dio. Like it's just like it just gets ingrained in you. Those... That's the thing though, because you you want to write songs like that. Yeah. I did. I, I still do. You want to write songs like he does. And, and that whole anthology of stuff from 72 is when he first comes out to 2010. Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah, he, he manages to paint like a, a whole world in your head. Just put you and in this mythical realm and, and you're just on for a journey. And I think each of his guitarists add to that mythical place in a different way and in a cool way. I, I, I think he, he knows how to pick them, I'll say. All right, we are massive, massive Dio fans here, as you guys can see. Um, each guy, I think, has their own little uh, niche of the Dio catalog that they like. And um, I got to say, before I go any further... Dave has the most fucking awesome shirt that I've ever seen on here. I'm I was looking a, at that before, yeah. I am not a fan of uh, Charlie Brown and Snoopy <laughs> in any stretch of the imagination. I hate them. That's but awesome, Dave has a shirt on here. It's, I don't who's the girl? I don't know who the girl is. Uh, Sally, I believe. Sally. Sally. And Charlie Brown. And Charlie Brown in front of him. Of course, Charlie Brown with his head down. An old consummate loser. And... Uh, Above it. The shirts <laughs> above it, it says, you know, in the, uh, what the balloon, the balloon thing. Uh, I still miss Ronnie James Dio. The shirt is That's fucking awesome. epic. I will post the, I took a picture of Dave with the shirt on. I will post it, um, it is tomorrow a- for when you guys listen to this. It, 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 it's actually, it, it's excellent. Uh, but uh, we just, we just wanted to uh, highlight the guitarists in, in Ozzy's band. We did it with Ozzy's. Uh, not Ozzy, I'm sorry, Dio. Dio's, Dio's band. And BC got me thinking Ozzy. Sorry. And we did that with, with Dio's guitar players. And, and BC's absolutely right. He's always surrounded himself with talent. Like we talked about before, if you, you think of epic um, metal albums, you're going to think Last in Line, you're going to think Holy Diver. Um, just in, in the people that he surrounded him with, uh, you have Vivian Campbell, Craig Goldie, uh, Tracy G, Rowan Robertson, Doug Ulrich, these guys are just amazing guitar players. So what, we'll, what we're going to do is, before we uh, wrap up here, we're going to go around the table and uh, give us your favorite uh, Dio guitar player, guys. BB. Um, I guess first, you know, you got to go with the Godfather. You know, first, you definitely have to go uh, Vivian Campbell. Uh, then next, I'm going to go Doug Aldridge, uh, Rowan Robertson, Tracy G, and Mr. Gold, he's going to... Hold up the end. Uh, you got, yeah, I would agree with you. You got to go Vivian Campbell, uh, Doug Aldrich, then I'm going Goldie, uh, then I'm going Roberts, and then I'm going Tracy G. Vivian uh, uh, Aldrich, Tracy G. 
And uh, Goldie and then uh, Robinson. Tony Aomi. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> He's not in the band. <laughs> Richie Blackmore. He's so um, <laughs> no, it's, it, it's, it's Vivian, Dog, and then everybody else is kind of vying for, for a, a place on the pedestal. I'm gonna I'm gonna say that I'm gonna say that uh, Vivian definitely you have to go with those first couple albums, and um, I'm gonna go uh, just for the sheer like holy fuck listen to this album Doug Ulrich for uh, Killing the Dragon, Craig Goldie a like they're neck and neck those two though just for on the strength of, of seeing Craig Goldie live and um, and Craig Goldie actually has a new band now also with Simon Wright and. Um, Rudy Sarazo, it's called Dream Child. Check those guys out. Very Dio esque. Uh, the guy sounds the guy sounds really good. He does. And uh, the the music is fantastic. So definitely check those guys out. Dream Child. And um, so I'm gonna go Vivian, Doug Alders, just by a hair. Craig Goldie and everyone else is gonna be tied for the rest of the rest of the field. Um, Good job, BB. We want to thank you guys for listening out there. Uh, we went a little longer today than we have on our last couple episodes uh, just because of the material. We wanted to do everything as much justice as we could. So you guys, get out there. Listen to these albums. Don't just listen to Holy Diver and Last in Line. Get out there and, and check out Magica. Check out, definitely check out Killing the Dragon. This album, it will tear your fucking head off. It's great. Listen to the Tracy G stuff. There's a lot of interesting stuff there. A lot of good rock and tunes. Um, stuff from Lock Up the Wolves with Ron Robertson is, is, is great. Listen to the song Wild One. It's fantastic. Even Heaven and Hell. Heaven and, and Heaven and go, Hell. Yeah, go back and listen to everything else. Listen to the... Uh, Even the Last Sabbath. You know, last, they were uh, Heaven last and Hell, they were great. Um, Devil I Know is a great album. Heaven and Hell, Mob yes. Rules. Long Live Rock and Roll, Rainbow Rising, uh, Richie Blackmore's Rainbow. Um, check out the Elf stuff. If you want to get a, a good scope of like kind of where Dio came from, listen to the old Elf stuff. Get out there and delve a little deeper. Get your shovel out there and you know dig out some of these uh, deeper tracks and these deeper albums. You will not be sorry. And thank everybody for listening. And uh, Dave, thank you once again you for for, having for coming on the on the show. Uh, we want to thank everybody out there. We love you guys. Keep sharing us. Um, tell your friends about us. By the time this comes out, I will be on Kiss Cruise Eight and having a good time there with with Rob and Chris. We will be doing a Kiss Cruise wrap up show in a couple weeks. And, and hopefully the plane situation. <laughs> yeah, hopefully our flights are are good to go. We'll let you know how our travel uh, plans worked out. <laughs> and uh, thanks for putting that on the end of the episode last week. Yeah, no that was pretty funny. No um, so, uh, you guys, thank you very much. We love you guys. We will check you out next time. And there definitely will be a next time. Yeah.